man, I want you to look at this place. I mean, 160,000 people are going to be here to watch this race. I mean, there's not another racetrack like this in the whole wide world. And the action, oh my gosh, the racing is incredible. Bumping, grinding, sparks flying, sheet metal flying. This, man, what a show. There's no place, there's not another track in the world that can get you pumped up like this place can. My favorite track, I love this place. I miss it. I like to be out there. Darrell will be out here in Thunder Valley, always special. They built a track in this part of eastern Tennessee back in 1961. Over the past four decades, Bristol Motor Speedway has become a shrine to America's best drivers. And at a time when patriotism is so prominent, the heroes of this sport join with this crowd in support of our country. day with American flags on the cars and in the stands this track overflowing with emotion red white and blue and a record sellout crowd on hand as Fox Sports presents Winston Cup Racing time now for the free race show and our corporate headquarters is always the Hollywood Hotel located in the garage area inside of turns three and four as we go to where the races are to bring you closer to the action. And when the action begins, Ryan Newman, who set a track qualifying record, is on the pole. And five-time Bristol winner Jeff Gordon will start alongside outside Newman, actually on the front row. Hi, for all of us here, I'm Chris Myers. Welcome to our pre-race show. And this race comes at a time when everyone's thoughts are on the brave men and women serving overseas. As for the way this sport is responding, let's check in with NASCAR President Mike Helton. He's with our Steve Burns. Thanks, Chris, with Mike Helton. Mike, everybody loves coming to Bristol, but given the fact our country's at war, did NASCAR think twice about this weekend's activities? Well, obviously, earlier in the week when all of the uh, conflict began, uh, there was a great deal of uh, due diligence going in from, from NASCAR's part as well as other uh, sports entities on what to do and how to go about things. And we spent a lot of time talking with folks in Washington at the White House as well as in Homeland Security. And, and after we got through the process of finding out uh, the information that was relative to us being prepared for things, uh, they were very uh, firm about their uh, request to not only NASCAR, but the NCAA and other forms of sports to continue uh, under the current situation, certainly, and, and that's what we've done. And, and uh, uh, I think it's a matter of uh, monitoring now what happens to see if there's any other appropriate reaction from NASCAR that's necessary. But for the time being, uh, they're encouraging activity to continue and, and uh, we'll keep an open mind and stay prepared and certainly work with the, the track as Jeff Bird has been a great host this weekend, being prepared for uh, the best we could be under all the circumstances. And going forward, we'll just watch it and monitor it. Okay, Mike, thanks very much. We'll go back to Chris Myers. All right, thank you, Steve. And the American Forces Network provided coverage of uh, today's race to our men and women uh, serving overseas with Daryl Waltrip and uh, Jeff Hammond. Uh, nice to see you, gentlemen. Yep. You've had a lot of success here as we talk more about the race uh, at 
of Bristol, and this already is a special place, Jeff, of being run this race at a special time. Yeah, it really is, Chris. And when you come to Bristol, believe it or not, not everybody likes coming here, Chris. There's some guys who just terribly, I mean, they hate it. This is one of those worst places they could ever think about coming to. But if you're going to come up, you got the right attitude, you got to have a lot of determination, and you've got to have a lot of anticipation if you want to be successful. Just like, you know, Rusty Wallace or Jeff Gordon, these guys do well here because they're able to do all these, I believe. And, Daryl, you won here at 12 times, so you know what it takes. Yeah, what it takes is you got to be patiently aggressive. That's Patience <laughs> is when you wait for the guy to make a mistake. Right. Aggressive means he didn't make it fast enough and you help him make the mistake. <laughs> all right, at 21 times in the 41 times they've raced here, the winner in the Bristol has gone on to win the championship, so it is special in, in a number of ways. And today will be the 2000th race in Winston Cup history to get a true sense of what the sport is all about. All you have to do is go back to race number 1,999. Last week in Darlington, it was a race for the ages, decided by inches. Here he comes. Here we go again. He's going to wait on him. He's going to put the crossover on him. He realized that wasn't a good move that last time. White flag. Here he goes. He's going to try to slide under him here. Come on, baby. And Blaney's coming. Both these cars are driving terrible right now. Nah. Not left to go. Nah, they're driving good. Come on, baby. You can do it on this end of the speedway. Come off the four and get up alongside of him. Half a mile. Here he gone. comes. Here he comes. Who's going to get off Here the he floor? comes. Here he comes. He's got him this time. It's going to be a drag. An incredible finish last weekend at Darlington. Kurt Busch, how did you manage to come so close to winning with no power steering? Well, we've been close a few times this year. I mean, it's just a tribute to the crew, and, you know, we've had mechanical things happen in the past. No big deal. I just had to keep the car as straight as I could and build a push into it so I didn't have to turn it to the right, but ended up slipping, and Craven got us at the end, so history was made. Great job. Ricky, how big a deal was that for you? Well, it was big. It was personal. You know, when you got to me in victory lane or I got to you, it was all about winning Darlington. My Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, I came to realize that was a pretty special race, and uh, I'm thankful that I was a part of it. Congratulations. Chris? All right, thanks, uh, Dick. And those two will be uh, forever linked, it appears. NASCAR's <laughs> top ten championship points in the standings. Matt Kenseth in the lead. Look, Ricky Craven is up to fifth, and who's right there with him? They Kurt are Bush. They are uh, tied together. <laughs> oh, there you go. Kurt Busch is uh, certainly part of that. Now, Ryan Newman, he's in 12th place in the points, but this week uh, set a new track qualifying record with a sub-15 qualifying run. Run, and uh, the speed is, is great here, but it's not everything. No, no, what you do on Friday, certainly it's uh, it's important to start up front here. We've documented that many times. But what you do on Friday doesn't mean diddly squat on Sunday because you got to take that fast car and parlay that into a victory. And sometimes that's harder to do than it sounds like. Yeah, it, it really is what you turn into is a situation where you've got to have a race car now that can endure this 500 laps. This place will literally rip a race car apart. Sometimes when you're going that much faster, next thing you know, you start making things break that you never knew would break before. And you see a couple guys right there that uh, were... The time, it took 16 years to go to under 17 seconds and then four years to get under 16. So the technology, obviously, moving fast. Well, what it shows is, I mean, I never thought I'd see a car go around here in under under 15 seconds. You take these cars up with 1,500 pounds of downforce, they got 800 horsepower, and you put a young, brave <laughs> rookie at behind the wheel, and he stands on the gas, you're going to set a record like he, that. He can still do it. He, he can, can still, still do it. it. We'll try it on a car. <laughs> Speaking, well, last year's, uh, I'd be up to list somewhere. <laughs> last year's Rookie of the Year, Ryan Newman. Uh, let's hear from him. He's with our Genies Alaska. And Ryan Newman averaging a pole about every five attempts. This is becoming old hat, but I guess if you have to be up front, this is the place you want to be. Well, for sure, but uh, you know the, the, the track's so fast, you get in live traffic, and hopefully we're going to go forward and not backward. And uh, just see what the Alto Dodge will do in race trim. We were pretty good when, in practice yesterday. Uh, just have to see what it's like, 500 laps. All right, second top ten start in three races here. Matt? Genie Jeff. Jeff Gordon's 2002 run in Thunder Valley was literally night and day. He led nearly 100 laps here in the spring, but then crashed in turns one and two. But four months later, the four-time Bristol winner added something to his racing resume that had eluded him, a Bristol night race victory. He dominated that event, which jump-started his three-win season. It ended a 31-race winless streak. Jet, a good place for you to jump-start the season again, but how do you rate your chances here? 
You know, our chances are good. I mean, we've got a great race car, a lot like what we had the last time uh, we ran this race, the last time we were at Bristol. So things have been going real well for us all weekend long. Uh, good starting position. Um, you know, pit stops have been awesome lately. Uh, you know, other than my little mistake by brushing the wall last weekend, things couldn't be better right now. And, yeah, we would like to, to jump start, you know, the season, get a win here. But um, we all know this is Bristol, man. you got a long way to go. you got to survive this place before you can get to victory. Lane, and I think if we can survive today, I think that uh, we've got a great shot at being in Victor Lane. For the third straight trip to Bristol, Super G starts his drive for a victory from the front row. Chris? All right, thanks, Matt. And how about uh, Jeff Gordon's uh, year? And it, it's a couple of wrecks. Yeah, but... you know, that's something that kind of is not typical Jeff Gordon. I've seen him uh, go through wrecks like everybody will crash, he'll come out the other side through the smoke. Right. He's gotten in a couple of wrecks this year. He's still not in bad shape, though. No, no, no. They, along with Robbie Loomis and the whole Hendrick group, this is exactly what they want want to be able to do. They've had some consistency. They've led some races. They're figuring their race car out. And last week, I mean, pretty much shown that if he just could have, you know, kept those tires under him and stayed out of the wall, yeah. I believe he could have won that race. So yeah. coming here, look out. This he is the place you could, you could get a race, a four-time right. Winston Cup champ, a Jeff Gordon. Maybe one day, if he plays his cards right, he'll end up on a cereal box like, you know, the <laughs> legend guys at Wheaties. Well, what are you doing with that? Oh, hey. I, I brought a cool. box of Wheaties. We <laughs> talk yeah. about legends right here. We got our buddy That's Darryl Walker. Uh, That's exactly right. And, uh, That's a 1973. Now, these will be on sale in stores, uh, what, starting in April? April the 1st, I think they said, to be out yeah. on the shelves. And, uh, I'm proud of that. Uh, a lot of, you know, a lot of athletes uh, through the years have been on the Wheaties box, and I tell you, you better eat your Wheaties when you right. come here, buddy. <laughs> exactly. All right. Yeah, the, you better uh, put on your cape, too. <laughs> the uh, breakfast of, uh, of champions, and uh, we'll find out who the champion will be here at Bristol once we cover 500 laps. We're counting down to the race here at Bristol Motor Speedway. As we get you ready, here's some thoughts from the men behind the wheel about the magic behind Bristol. It's just a lot of memories that I have at this track, you know. Uh, I mean, I've, I've I've won races here. I've had great battles here. Uh, I've bumped and I've banged. And oh man, when I come to Bristol, I walk up to the racetrack and I can look straight up, and I still can barely see the top of the grandstands are so high. And then when I come into the racetrack and they start practice, it's a solid roar, and the people are just going nuts. And you come out from underneath that tunnel and you look up and it's like the greatest stadium of all time for us. Um, I think it's Bruton Smith's greatest accomplishment, in my opinion, and probably the greatest racetrack we run. Fox welcomes you back to Thunder Valley, where the bucolic countryside turns on race day into Bristol Motor Speedway with all the banging and clanging of cars. I'll explain bucolic later, Daryl. <laughs> when racing begins, the noise is deafening on this half-mile speedway. It's shaped like a like a bullfight arena. The running of engines, music to the ears of the crowd, though, and to our Jeannie Zalasco, who's outside the track to describe the scene. Jeannie? Tony well, Stewart can remember the first time he came to the Tennessee Mountain Empire. Words like amazing and awesome came to mind. He wasn't Talking about the track, how about the 21-story tower that embraces turns one and turn two? And there are three other towers, along with 52 suites that some 160,000 fans will call home today. Somewhere amongst the mass of humanity, you'll find our Steve Bird. Well, getting a ticket to sit in the grandstands isn't easy, but John Pardo was going to come here with his wife, Jamie, for the very first time using this seat, but instead he's on the USS Iwo Jima on his way to northern Iraq. He's a Marine. Jamie, I know there's something you'd like to say. Donnie, I love you. I miss you. I can't wait till you come home. To all the men and women out there, we pray for your safe return. All right, well said, Jamie. Let's go back to Chris Myers. All right, thanks, Steve. There has always been a strong bond with the uh, troops and NASCAR, and you see from uh, Ricky Rudd to Travis Carter's car, Todd Bodine, to uh, Jerry Nadeau's car, those uh, supported and in the race uh, today. And uh, gentlemen, the uh, the cars in the race today, let's go out back to uh, on the track. And this is a track, in fact, the record for cautions in a Winston Cup race is 20. It's happened here twice. That means a lot of banging and stopping and beating. So, Darrell, take us through a driver, how he gets through this and survives. It's really a, a survival yeah. of the fittest. Well, it's, it's, you're always there anticipating what's going to happen. You've got to think way ahead. A spotter does you no good here. And the only thing you can do is when you're going into 
the three, he can tell you if there's a wreck on the other straightaway, on the front straightaway. He can't drive through those wrecks for you because there's lots of them. You got to instinctively go around them. So you're always thinking ahead, trying to think ahead. Somebody's gonna gonna be in trouble. The thing you want to do is get that hand up and let that guy behind you not run into you. And a crew chief, Jeff, has to help uh, to calm the temper of his driver. Exactly. You've got to learn how to temper your temper. Are you sit right there? Daryl talked about earlier. People try to move each other out of the way. Sometimes it's more deliberate than others, and the end result can be very disastrous. You can see right here, as Ryan Newman goes around and collects the wall after being bumped by Tony Stewart. And last year's winner, there's Kurt Busch, a little bump and grind, a little bump and moving on uh, right. Jimmy Spencer. And here's where it gets a little heated, right? Right, right here. Just to this, this is where you really got to jump in there and say, driver, calm down now, calm down. This what happens? Cool. They don't listen, do they, Daryl? No, this is where you need <laughs> anger management right yeah. here. <laughs> That's after the race. So that all builds up, builds up, it kind of cassandras at the end of the day. What you do is you tell a driver, say, look, don't tear my race car up if you want to get you know, get on him. Take it out behind the truck after the race, man. Go ahead and get out there, and, and we'll you, keep everybody else back. You, you two have. You should hear the stories. <laughs> uh, at, at racing the way it ought to be, right? Among the active drivers, though, Rusty Wallace, the most wins here with nine. He starts in the second row today, and he's with Steve Burns. Steve? Hey, Chris, he won his very first Winston Cup race here in 1986, has gone on to win 54 times. Can you make this your 10th Bristol victory, Rusty? I sure can. We've got a good car today. It's run strong. We hand, we're handling good, qualified good, so, man, I'm all optimistic today. Why do you love this track so much, Rusty? I kind of cut my teeth on tracks like this back in the Midwest on ASA circuit. That circuit taught me a whole lot how to work in your car, how to get around bull rings like this. And, uh, hey, man, after you win here nine times, uh, you get real confident. Best of luck, Rusty. Thank you very much. Let's go to Matt Yoakum. Well, Steve, Dale Earnhardt Jr., a third and a fourth here last year. Now, your little junior rights want to know, is this the day you break through here at Bristol? Well, we hope to kick some ass today. I mean, it's a tough race track, and you got to you got to stay on top of the wheel. Uh, we got a good car, and uh, looking forward to it. I want to say, uh, you know, all our thoughts are with all the troops as we race today. I want to say hello to um, a friend of mine, Marissa, in California, and uh, hope we have a good day today. Now, as a driver, you got to love this place. This is a driver's place. Yeah, uh, yeah, you know, you love it and you hate it. You know, it depends on how good you run, but. Uh, yeah, it's a tough race track. I love running here, but you don't always get the results that you want. And, uh, you know, as much fun as it is, it can really make a, make a long week. With Junior starts in row four, so numerology row on the inside. Spencer in the seven starts seventh. Junior, driver eight, rolls off eighth. Chris? All right, thanks. Uh, eight driver in the uh, Budweiser Chevrolet, and uh, certainly a guy who in his last two races here in Bristol, he's been in the top five, ready to break out. What will it take? Darryl? Yeah, he's, he's led 22% of the laps of the last two races here, uh, 300 and some laps out of 1,000. i tell you what's interesting, though. Kelly Yarbrough led all 500 laps here when was that? in 1973. Oh, well, with no was... power steering. With no yeah, power steering. No one other steering. thing, there was one caution-free race here in 1971, won by Charlie Glossback. But this is a race, Jeff, where you kind of build up your car, extra bumpers, whatever protection you can put on. Now, this place here, it just, again, it literally tears the car apart. It does. The ball joints, the, the bumpers, I mean, everything track about bar. this thing, track bars, you, anything it can break will Shock. break here at Shock. Bristol, and, uh, unlike any other racetrack. But you can go to Daytona and Talladega and not break stuff, you'll break here. The car you uh, come to the track with is not necessarily the one you it's leave with. It's got to be bulletproof. <laughs> but you can survive. Our experts uh, will help you pick today's race or get an idea, but first, let's check the standing so far. Jeff Hamlin moving out out in front, Larry McReynolds running second, and uh, Darrell Walter with a win, but they're still in the hunt running third. So let's let uh -oh. Jeff go first. Who do you like in today's race? Oh, boys, I hate to tell you this right now. This is a track for excitement. So who any better than Mr. Excitement starting seventh, Jimmy Spencer? Well, guys, I'm going with a man that's starting up near the front with a brand new race car. Steve Burns talked to him. This is where he's going to end that 67 streak of winless going to victory lane. I'm going with Rusty Wallace. Well, I hope history doesn't repeat itself. I picked Jeff Gordon last year, and he spun out down here in turn one. Jeff, don't look back. Keep looking ahead, buddy. I picked 24. Uh, kiss you goodbye, baby. Uh, <laughs> and, 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 and baby <laughs> Jeff, now he just texts the poor guy, right? <laughs> Our winning a race takes a great uh, pit crew. Of course, pit strategy is something important here. Jeff Green's crew, the winner of the McDonald's drive through Powered by Powerade Contest. His online car spent the least amount of time on pit road last week, grabbing the weekly prize of $20,000. 
and Michael Waltrip's crew of those participating teams is in the lead for the $200,000 season-long prize. That's the best place to pass them is in the pits here at Bristol. Exactly right. Enter the Via NASCAR Grand Marshal for a day contest. Tune into the first hour of race coverage. Look for the secret number on the animated car. Then log on to NASCAR.com or FoxSports.com. That guy looks like the Monopoly guy. With the member you bank error you in your face. That no, it wasn't here. me. No. Enter the number for your chance to win, and the winner will start the race, get the ride in the pace car, wave the checkered flag next year at the Rock. So via NASCAR, Grand Marshal for a day. The contest continuing later today here on Fox. Hard to believe that this is the uh, 2000th Winston Cup race. I'm sure you have your own uh, memorable moments from races in the past, and these guys do too. We asked our crew to provide their most memorable moments. And we thank Gary Lang back at our uh, home office in Los Angeles for putting oh, that together. Yeah, does a great job it. on a lot of our opens and uh, teases. And I know you guys get asked a lot. Yeah. You must have a lot of memories having been a part of some of those. But let's uh, help us out here. Start with a couple. Your most yeah, memorable. last 30 years. <laughs> yeah. How about last week? Yeah. Yeah. Obviously, I have my personal favorites. But one of my favorites is uh, Bill Elliott in 1985. To see how Bill won 11 races that year, just dominated. That run he made at Talladega making up two laps was incredible. And uh, that was one of my favorite memories. And I'm, there are are many, many more. The, one of the Winston yeah. races uh, where Earnhardt made the pass in the grass. That was one of my favorites. So, Jeff. Tim Richmond, I mean, Kel Yorba, I watched Kel Yorba back a car in a uh, wall at Martinsville and drive that car to second place finish, basically on just bouncing up around the racetrack and shook his guts loose. I mean, it, the commitment these guys have as far as what they do every week. I mean, there's so many great moments you can't think about all of them. And the one that Bobby Hamilton won at Talladega. I mean, oh, yeah. 40 cars came across the finish line. We didn't have transponders. We wouldn't even know who won the race, let alone who finished second. We could go on and up, but the good news is there are plenty more memories uh, that lie ahead and fitting that race number 2000 will take place at one of NASCAR's landmark locations. Perhaps Bill France said it best when he described NASCAR fans as the kind of people who go to war and win wars for America. Here is a rendition of God Bless America. rendition by Rebecca Lynn Howard of God Bless America. Coming up, our national anthem, and then a day at the races. Will Kurt Busch repeat at Bristol? How will Dale Jarrett fare? Can Jeff Gordon win his first race of the year? Will we see another fantastic finish? Here's last week's champ. 85th race at Bristol, but the 2000th Winston Cup race. Listen to the Channing crowd. USA, Chris. A Channing USA. As we get ready to race, the answer is 500 laps away. NASCAR on FX from Bristol Motor Speedway. Welcomes you to Thunder Valley in the foothills of East Tennessee. They build a sporting stadium. There are many in the country that can hold 100,000 plus, but they're built for stick and ball sports. They're not built for this kind of thunder. 
Welcome to Bristol Motor Speedway. We're around the half mile concrete today. 43 Winston Cup cars will square off for 500 laps. It's the NASCAR Winston Cup Series from Bristol Motor Speedway. Hi, everybody, and welcome to Bristol. Mike Joy with Larry McReynolds celebrating one of the freedoms we enjoy, the freedom to spend Sunday afternoon watching them slam and bang at Bristol. The final practice session, Larry, the difference between the fastest and the 40th car, just two-tenths of a second. How do you pass and how do you race like that when everybody's so equal? I mean, it's like one driver told me. You can be five one-hundredths of a second slow per lap here, and you're going to be in the way. You can be five one-hundredths faster than anybody, and you're going to be the class of the field. When you're that close and the competition's that close, the only way you can pass someone is do that little bump and run and get them out of the way. And, Mike, it's the first short track race of the 2003 season. It's a track that I always couldn't wait to get to, but normally before the weekend was over, I couldn't wait to get out of this place. <laughs> the contact here is not constant. Uh, but it's almost so. I mean, it is. I mean, it's it's constantly something going on. I mean, these straightaways are only 650 feet long, so you're constantly in a battle. Yesterday, 13 caution flags, 12 of them by contact. Something had happened in turn four, and cars had crashed back in turn two behind it. That's the kind of action we expect today as we go trackside to open the day. Colors. Go ahead. Ladies and gentlemen, would you stand please for the presentation of colors by the Carson Newman College ROTC Cadets. And for our invocation, the Reverend Mike Ripe of the Van Sant Church of Christ in Van Sant, Virginia. Let's all bow for a moment of silent prayer in memory of our troops overseas. it's humbling to know that we are in your presence today and being in your presence we can approach you with confidence and ask that you will provide each and every one of us with safety and entertainment and we can also ask that you will provide safety for our troops and our leaders who are fighting for freedom not only ours but the freedom of many other people and we pray this God to you because you are a good and gracious God in Jesus name amen and for our national anthem, MCA Nashville recording artist, Rebecca Lynn Howard. Oh, say can you see by the dawn's early light what so proudly we hailed at the twilight's last gleaming whose broad stripes and bright stars through the perilous fight oh the ramparts we watched were so gallantly streaming and the rock and the red
forces for the United States of America all over the world. The Grand Marshals for today's Food City 500. thousand seats including the 150 VIP suites and they are all filled the reason contact here this is a contract sport on this today our Main Street since bright and early this morning they've driven here from all across the eastern United States parked their cars as much as four miles away and walked into this great stadium, this 160,000 seat facility with its high banks and concrete corners that'll challenge drivers today. Budweiser, official beer of NASCAR, proud sponsor of the Bud Pole Award, given to the fastest qualifier at each Winston Cup race. Flying Ryan Newman gets his second one this season to lead all drivers. Since 1979, Anheuser-Busch has awarded more than $8 million as title sponsor of NASCAR's Pole Award program. Here's how they'll line up today. It's Newman alongside the prior track record holder, Jeff Gordon. Newman, first driver to tour this track in under 15 seconds. Row two, Kenny Schrader. Big pleasant surprise and Rusty Wallace, the winningest active driver here. Bill Elliott and Mike Skinner, two veterans, either one of whom could wind up in victory lane today. Jimmy Spencer, a big seventh for number seven. And driver eight, position eight. Kurt Busch, after last week's close finish, is ninth, and Tony Stewart, one of today's favorites, he is 10th. Darrell Waltrip joins us in the booth as you look at the rest of the grid, and we get set to go on a place where you have won 12 times. There's got to be a secret to this. Tell me. Well, it's to maintain your cool as long as you can. You know, you're going to lose it sometime. <laughs> Just try to maintain it as long as you can. I, I would talk to a driver, but the pace laps here go by so quickly and there's so little time. As I've said many a time, hey guys, I'm not doing a radio show out here, so I got no time to talk. Right now the field is broke up into two groups. They're trying to get that ever important pit road speed of 30 miles per hour. We only have one car that has to drop to the rear of the field. Jamie McMurray, he's qualified 26. They wrecked in practice before qualifying, but because they actually changed engines after qualifying, they have to go to the rear of the field. 45 cars were here, 43 starts the race, two went home. That would be Larry Foyt, would be one, and I'm right on top of the other, help me. The thing about the start, Mike, is it's always so treacherous. What you try to do is cut a deal with the guy on the inside. Please let me down in front of you. Right, Herbie Sadler uh, with the universities of the state of Virginia. Chevy was the other driver who failed to qualify for today's race. You want to get single file here as quickly as possible. That's the safest thing. But this track's a lot better today, Larry, than it was yesterday because the bush race really added almost another groove up there. And it's a little cloudier today. The track should have maybe a little more grip to it. That sun's not beating down on it. Dick Bergren from Speedway Illustrated. By the time this contest has ended, every single car in the field will be scarred from contact with the wall and other cars. The big deal, keep the wheels pointing straight. Matt Yoakum. Dick, in the last two years, Elliott Sadler and Kurt Busch used this event to score their first career Winston Cup victory. Today, Dave Blaney hopes to make it three in a row. He's got the Booty Barker advantage. Last year in Bush Series action here at Bristol, Booty's cars finished second and third. The only problem for Blaney, traffic. He starts all the way back in 31st. The Genie's Alaska. Well, usually a crew chief will tell you each week that he expects to win the race. Chad Canals is going with a different psychology. Jimmy Johnson's crew chief is saying, we expect to finish 43rd this way, the way this track is. Anything better than that will be a win. By the way, Jeff and Larry, he has said any time during the race, if you guys want to come down and take his place on the box, you are welcome to it so he can avoid the Bristol headache. Steve? Well, Jeannie, Dale Earnhardt Jr. has never won here at Bristol, but a year ago he finished third and fourth. This morning the boys atop this pit box assured me that they figured something out that's going to get Jr. into victory lane for the first time here at Bristol. Mike? He'll have lots of competition getting there. 500 laps 
43 cars start, same as yesterday, but yesterday half the field wasn't running at the checkered flag. They were well, wrecked. See the pit window there, 150 to 160 laps for tires or fuel. Track position, more important here than fresh tires. Pass them in the pits. That's the safest place. Well, let me tell you what I want you to do, DW. What oh, I want baby. you to do every week. Reach oh, the pit, pull them belts tight one more time for me. I'm ready to go, man. I'm pumped. Coming down. Buggity, 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 boys. Let's go racing. Dude, that outside group looks pretty good right there. Fighting on the first lap like it was the last lap. Well, I think Newman was probably surprised. He had the position, and this, he had the line, and the car broke loose with him as it came off the corner, and that car looks like it's real, real, real loose. He cannot turn it to the bottom of the racetrack. His teammate Rusty Wallace takes second after starting fourth of that brand-new race car, Schrader in the 49s back and forth. And it can be air pressure. You know, you start the tires really, really low here because you're going to get a lot of buildup, and that doesn't always feel real good for the first five or six laps. Here comes Stewart on the outside. We've got trouble down one here. and two. Kyle Petty in the 45. No caution just yet. Now the caution is out. He's trying to get going before the leaders come around and put him a lap down. He'll make it, too. Same as yesterday. First caution of the day. Lap three. Well, Jeff Gordon in that 24 car, he had jumped out to quite a lead. Let's look at the replay of Kyle's wreck down in one and two. He and Robbie Gordon might have gotten together there. That's that's just casual contact here. That's a, that's two cars kind of fighting for the same place. Try to get to the bottom. You turn down a little early, and the guy didn't give you enough room. You're going to touch. You touch here, the cars are really light entering the corners. See everybody kind of trying to. You see uh, Kyle trying to get down in front of Robbie. You always think early in the race. This is what you're thinking. That guy will give me a break. It's early in the race, he'll give me a break. You can't give a guy a break. Ricky Rudd got a break because Kenny Wallace, who you're riding with, didn't run right over top of him right here. Well, he did bump into him, and that's, it. that's the other thing you worry about all day long is you see the wreck. You get on the brakes, the guy behind you runs over you. From Ricky Rudd. Wait, 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 wait. Now go. Notice that shot right there, and we'll probably see it again here. The 31 just barely gets in the Kyle. It don't take much to send you around here, Darrell. You're running around a half-mile racetrack at over 120-something miles an hour. Like we said, you start the tires really, really low. Therefore, the cars are a little bit too loose on the first few laps. Got to give those tire pressure time to come up. If you get bumped, you're already loose. You get spun out. NASCAR has cautioned the 31 team. Robbie Gordon. Let's keep a list. Because the line at the big red truck, when this is over with, they'll probably be there for a couple hours. Take a ticket, take a seat. Jeff Gordon has led all five laps. Pole sitter Ryan Newman in third. Now I'm going to show you a problem this early in the race when everybody's still on the lead lap. 43 cars at a half-mile racetrack. I mean, right here is the start-finish line. Here's the lead cars right here. Look at the tail end of the field. They are almost three-quarters of a lap down. Here you're going to watch Jeff Gordon take the start-finish line. Look at these guys. They're only halfway down the back stretch. Yeah, and Kyle just barely got out before the green came out, and really it's not going to hurt him because he doesn't have any traffic to contend with for a little while. This is where those crew chiefs of those cars are saying, be patient, but hurry. The leader's coming. Oh, yeah. Patiently aggressive. But patience means, as I said, you wait. Give the guy a break. If he doesn't make that mistake soon enough, you help him. Skinner, Dale Jr., and the nine of Bill Elliott. Here is point leader Matt Kenseth, who started 37, moving up on Steve Park. Car in the wall off two, it's the 19 car. Casual contact. He got up, maybe. he got up out of the, it looked like he may have had a flat tire possibly, or else he could pick up some debris, but I think he may have a right front tire flat. And boy, Robbie Gordon had to jump on the brakes coming off turn four because he was running up on him in a hurry. There's something definitely wrong with that race car, Darrell. And he has to wait till everybody goes by just to be able to get down to get into the pits. He's coming up off turn two. He hits the wall pretty hard there. I mean, you're carrying so much speed, and if you get out of the groove, you just run out of racetrack. Mayfield will make it to the pits without further incident. We stay under green. 
and what he's hoping he's going to come to pit road now and you enter pit road this is treated like one pit road you entered it turn two all the way down the back pits you go through the apron i mean it starts right over here this is where you enter pit road even part of the apron here is part of the pit road you have to maintain 30 miles an hour the front stretch pits this is where you go out right there it's almost three quarters of this racetrack spent on pit road Fifth place, Mike Skinner has gone past into fourth. Dale Jr. takes Schrader for fifth. Bill Elliott's coming. Boy, Jr. made a good move under Keith Kenny, but he really liked, he got sideways coming off of turn two. These cars, that's a problem you have here. Off turn two, you always seem to get loose. Sometimes you catch it, sometimes you don't. Now, this is the AT&T camera on our front valence of Kenny Schrader's car. Trouble, turn one, Michael Waltrip. Dave Blaney collects Dale Jarrett. Ricky Rudd, the 21, just spreads his way through. Casey Mears, the 41, don't quite make it through, and here comes the leader. That's the 77. They've got the back end tore up a little bit. Some front damage on the left front. He'll make it around here on pit road in a second. Rear end. Initially, it was Michael Waltrip sideways, and you see a lot of damage to his Napa Chevy. But he wasn't alone in this one. He just gets loose up off the corner. Coming up off the turn, the car gets loose with him. Blaney tries to get out from behind him and can, and here comes Dale Jarrett. You cannot stop these race cars. You're going 120 miles an hour, you just got no way of stopping it in time to miss that wreck. Now watch Michael, watch his hands. He comes off the corner in the corner. Did you see his hands? He got loose. He's trying to fight it, trying to fight it. Bam, turns around looking right at Dale, Dale Jarrett. Now, ride with Dale Jarrett. And Darrell, what, when Michael gets loose, what's that do to the driver right behind him? Well, he's trying to avoid him is what he's trying to do. Blaney, oh, the hole closed up on Dale Jarrett. And I'm sure this spotter's telling Dale Jarrett, go high, go high, because Michael's down low, but he slides up in front of him. And you'll see Dave Blaney. There's Michael loose. Dave see, Blaney can't arrest his forward progress. And Michael came down the racetrack. Blaney's trying to go by on the inside. They make contact. That's a big hit for the guy that's third in points. Michael, seventh in points. Dave Blaney here early in this race. Second caution of the day. Dale Jarrett's UPS Ford pushed behind the wall for more repairs as we go back to green. We got trouble already. Three. Casey Mears, John Andretti, Todd Bodine. Hits Todd Bodine again down on the apron, and the 54 car caution is back out. All they did was wave the green flag. John Andretti in the 43 there, he had been to pit road for some service. And you want to know why you look in their record books over the last few years here, why you see two names, Jeff Gordon and Rusty Wallace? Look where they are. Out in front of all this. Way out there. Well, Darrell, it's... I've heard you say it many times, cautions breed caution. And they do, and see what happens is you run a few laps here and you're better than the guy in front of you. So you get an opportunity on a restart, for instance. I'm going to get him now because he's holding me up and things don't always work out. Plus, the other thing I didn't see those guys do, clean their tires up. Ah. A lot of debris, you spin the tires. Guy in front of you spins the tires, you got a good run on him, you bam into him. All these shots right here, pretty normal looking shots for Bristol. Now the field is all single file and accordioned up here down to turn three. Oh boy, that started when Todd Bodine got in the back of it. Was that Kyle Petty ahead of him? Yeah, it was Kyle Petty in the 45. And it's just a big accordion. You squeeze it, and this is what happens. Yeah. And, and somebody goes and somebody doesn't. And when no, the guy doesn't go, he gets run over from behind. Matt. Mike Dave Blaney overseeing the repairs to his car. Dave, what happened? I don't know. Michael just uh, got real, real loose, and I just got into him before he could save his. Well, perfect timing, actually, for Michael Waltrip. They just had the tape at the bungee cords ready as they're trying to clean up from his last accident. Got sideways, he said. I got hit. The toe's off. The back is bent, but it still drives fine. They've had a tug of war with the sheet metal. Dick? 16 crew members are right now working on jail. Jarrett's number 88 car. Brad Parrott, the crew chief, is at the front of the car. He is shouting instructions, trying to orchestrate the repairs to this car. The car was so badly damaged, Jarrett tried to get down pit road, turn left to get behind the wall. The car wouldn't even turn. They had to put it in the pits, pull the fender out, and go to work on the left front. This thing is badly bent up, Mike. 
the sawzall becomes your most important tool right here, Larry. Yeah, it, I mean, it really is. And I mean, the biggest problem these teams have, especially when you're tore up and you're trying to stay on the lead lap, Mike, is you have no time to stop in your pits to work on your car. Remember, we saw how long the pit road is. Mike and Walter, they need to work on their car. There just isn't enough time, even under caution. 20 laps, three caution flags. Could be a long day here in Bristol. You're not out as long as she'll roll. <laughs> NASCAR on Fox is brought to you by Pizza Hut. Now you can get our new freshly baked cinnamon sticks. By Pepsi Cola, experience the joy of Pepsi. By Radio Shack, you've got questions, we've got answers. And by Ford, the official truck of NASCAR. We're behind them 100%. Uh, that, that our prayers brought to them and their families. I mean, a lot of times the families and, and the people who are back here, you know, are sometimes more concerned, more worried because of the unknown of what's out there. And uh, we just wish them all the best. So far. Here at Bristol, 26 laps complete, three caution flags so far. And Jeff Gordon has led every lap. Matt? Well, Mike, this horse hit home to just about everybody, but to some people even more so, especially Jeff Cook, the jackman on Jeff Gordon's team. He's wearing a patch on his helmet for the 846 Transportation Company. His brother is in the Army Reserve, soon to be deployed to Iraq. His brother already out of his mind, knowing what's taking place across the waters. Thanks, Matt. Our pole sitter has made a pit stop. Yeah, I mean, he gave up that third position. Daryl, I think you were right. That race car was very, very loose, so he's going to go from third all the way back to 35th. They came in, decided to change four tires. I saw him screw down on the track bar, which means they were tightening that car up. He was loose. Now, what Ryan needs is probably about a 25 or 30 lap run with hopes then a caution comes out in those leaders pit and he get that track position back, but he has put himself in a hole early. Yeah. You know, obviously he can get around a racetrack pass. Set a new track record here of under 15 seconds. Then next thing you got to figure out is, uh, you know, how to make that car race that way. Here you see our Fox tracks on Jeff Gordon, our leader, Rusty Wallace in second, Mike Skinner in third. Pace car drops them off about 35 miles an hour before they get up to speed. Rusty Wallace, nine wins here, going for 10. And Mike Skinner. One of the surprises in qualifying, remember, this is the hometown team. Morgan McClure Racing, owners of the number four base just up the street in Abingdon, Virginia. I, I just think Rusty was ready for the restart more than Jeff. I think Jeff didn't clean his tires up well enough. Rusty did, and Rusty got the jump. Kenny Schrader, Kirk Bush. It's a battle for seventh. There comes Tony Stewart in that 20 car. You know, he's had good runs here, eight starts, but everything's been good in the August race. He's never finished better than 15th in the spring race. They're just showing so much more consistency this year, Larry. Uh, he's off to a great start, and if he comes on strong in the second half like he's done in the past, he's going to be a hard man to beat for that championship. Five cars behind the wall at 20 laps. Todd Bodine, John Andretti, Casey Mears, Dave Blaney, and Dale Jarrett. Here comes Junior for third on Mike Skinner. Yeah, he's got the best car right now. He's uh, he's up on the wheel right now, and uh, he's just, just opening the bottom just a little wee bit, and he can stick it right in there. Well, that's what you want to be able to do is cut that sucker down where that left wheel will hook the apron, but not upset the car. That's when you get your best acceleration. A left tire will get a lot of grip down on that black asphalt. Gordon for the lead and gets it. You know, Rusty Wallace slipped up high, and Jeff went for it. Got to be a deal made. No way can he pass Rusty and Rusty uh, pass him. Had to be a deal somewhere. We'll see. Steve? Casey Mears just coming out of the infield care center. Casey, what happened? You know, I don't know. All I can see is the back of John Andretti, and, I mean, he can only pass with a high side before he gets to the start finish line. So I was just kind of going through the gear, just looking. The biggest thing we wanted to do here was just get back to laps and experience around this place and just kind of taking it easy.
that car back in there because he's our only rookie of the year candidate to not have a DNF this year. Well, and see what happens is you, drivers that run here all the time, there is an expectation. You know, I know you're going to go when you're supposed to. I know you're going to do what you guys expect guys to do other things. And when you try to be maybe conservative or run a little bit different style or different race, you get run over. Derek Cope on pit road with the hood up, overheating, and during the last caution, a pit stop for our pole sitter, Matt Noswine. Pole sitter Ryan Newman gave up third for 35th, Mike, simply because the car was way too loose. Pole crew chief Matt Moreland, I almost spun out by myself. I feel like we've got to come down and make some adjustments. They made a major wedge and track bar adjustment. Still soldiering on in 35th. Nice place battle right here, and it's a good one. Schrader in the Ward. 22. And the thing about Ryan Newman, he has not made a single position gain since making that pit stop. He's hung back there in 35th, and he's about three-quarters of a lap down to leader Jeff Gordon. I like that purple car that uh, Bobby Labonte is running this week, weekend. It's uh, Advar. It's, uh, you know, Bobby has uh, asthma, and that's an asthma treatment. It's a spray. They're running a special paint job here this weekend. It's kind of strange to see him in purple. It does, something besides green, but uh, I, I like that color. He's already taken a lot of grief over. we got a pass for second place back there. Dale Jr. slipped under Rusty Wallace and went to second spot. The, the smart guys here, when you get up behind a guy and you're racing him pretty hard, he's going to let you go. Steve Burns. Jimmy Spencer to take the lead and the win, and here they are nose to tail. It's a battle for six. Jimmy Spencer in the seven, Kurt Busch in the 97, but boy, that orange car, Tony Stewart in the 20, he's coming. Probably a little bit early for uh, anything drastic to happen between uh, those two guys or any of the guys right now. Everybody just wants to get into a rhythm here. Hit your marks, get some laps behind you. How do you decide when to run somebody hard and when to let them go, Darren? Well, if, if they're beating around on your back bumper, you got to have some room back behind you. If something happens, you want to be able to slow down without getting run over. So you let that guy go on. And then by the same token, when you're hounding a guy, if he doesn't let you go pretty quick, you got to decide what you're going to do because the same thing can happen to you. He slows down, you knock the front end off the thing. Sure. Dick Bergeron. Yeah, that this to it as well. Kurt Busch's car is not handling as well as he might like, Mike. It's a little bit loose. A loose car. Not a good idea to start banging into people's back bumpers. And all these cars are going to be a little bit loose at the start of this race. That's the whole thing. The track's dirty. Uh, they'll make the adjustments as they go along after first pot stop and they get the cars better. And that's always the hope here, knowing that they're going to tighten up just a little bit. They're going to start not turning as you get longer into a run. Now, you can't be like Ryan Newman was and be so loose you're going to spin out. Uh, there's, a, there's a difference between being free and being loose. 19th, 20th, 21st. Johnny Benson in 20th. Jeff Green wants that spot. Kevin Harvick just ahead of them, past Benson a lap ago. And this is a battle for about 19th or 20th, Mike. But what's going on, though, the leader is coming. He's almost on the same straightaway as these guys. And if you watch the cars that they're getting ready to come up on, you'll start seeing them beating and banging on each other because they know they got to go. And some of those, and they're good race cars. Oh, yeah. The they're 12's one of them. Right. Yeah, I mean, the leader is in the middle of the backstretch going into three right now. That other group are just coming off four. More than likely, somebody in this back... So I don't know, eight or ten cars will run over run over each other. All right, here's today's singular wireless virtual crew chief question. You can vote now from your singular wireless phone. Send text message Fox to phone number 191 or visit foxsports.com to vote online. I want to say a big welcome to all watching on American Forces Television Network today. Glad to have you folks with us. Hope you're enjoying the race. There's the Army car of Jerry Nadu. Running well in 12th place. Had a great car last week and uh, just had a fitting break and uh, put him in trouble. 74 car up the racetrack, but he saved it. Car no, two. No ah. caution, but they're going to start stacking up over there if he don't get down below. Something. He can't get down. I mean, it's he like a conveyor can't. belt of race cars right now. He's trying to get down to his pit so he can get into the pits or else he just 
He's not going fast enough to pull no, down. No, he can't. He's got a problem that's going to keep him up there. He's Gosh, that caution out, and boy, what a break for Ryan Newman in that 12 car. He was just about to go a lap down. There you see him in the 12. There you see leader Jeff Gordon about three cars behind him. There you see it, 16 seconds behind the leader. That's a lap. That's a full <laughs> lap. Tony Raines, who had such a great run, finishing the runner-up yesterday in the Channel Lock 250 here at Bristol, brings out the fourth caution of the day. He had trouble down in his turn one and down in turn one and two. He got up high, thought maybe he just gotten into loose stuff. It looks like he may have uh, something more terminal than that. Yeah, you see the smoke coming out there. He's uh, lost his engine. That's why he couldn't get down. There is radio chatter indicating Earnhardt Jr. may pit. The pit road is not open this lap. Well, they've ran 55 laps. Now, 16 of those has been caution, but I still believe this is where you're going to come to pit road to make those adjustments because you don't want to take a chance of staying out there and the car's starting to really get worse on you. I'm staying out. I Jeff, believe I want you to pit now. I want to hold a little seatbelt on the right side. Right 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 Are you sure? Yeah, 10 4. Speed that. Temperature should be Jeff Gordon, your leader at 56 laps, and here comes Junior to pit road with Mike Skinner, Bill Elliott, Jimmy Spencer, Rusty Wallace trying to squeeze in. What happened, Rusty looked in his mirror, saw everybody was coming, and he decided, hey, I'm not going to stay out here in, against all these cars with fresh tires. And I mean, you have to come in again. You come in all the way over there in turn two. That's the backstretch pits. Now you go around the apron, but it's still part of pit road. You still have to maintain that pit road speed. Jeannie. Well, the 48 car, Jimmy Johnson, tight through the center, so they will make a track bar. Justin, one round up, four tires. Nick? Well, Mike Skinner is taking four tires, as has Kurt Busch, and they're gone. Bernsey. Leonard Jr. says his car is loose in and loose out. Off, they'll take one pound of air out of the right rear tire. Let's go to Matt. Steve, it's going to be an air pressure adjustment all the way around, except for the left front on Rusty Wallace's Dodge. They were going to stay out, but at the last minute, Rusty made the call, and just like Larry said, he saw all the cars coming, decided to pit. Robbie Fuller finishes service. He's going to be blocked in by the 49. He's going to be at the backup. Look at all the traffic that goes by. Rusty Wallace loses a lot of track position here on pit road. I mean, they're three, four wide leaving pit road, but let me tell you who the real winner was on that pit stop. Mike Skinner in that four car, they had a good stop, but pit selection. He has the last pit box on the backstretch pit. He got to his pit box. There you see it right there. He had a free ride leaving, and he was coming around the front stretch pit before a lot of those guys even got to their pit box. I'm happy I stay down. I'm Rusty Wallace. You went out there by yourself, second. though. <laughs> Rusty went from second to 30th. There is Mike Skinner's pit. Now they come in at turn two so that the backstretch pit cars would not be penalized. But you see Skinner's pit position right there. So he's going to be first in ahead of the cars that pit on the front stretch. And then he's going to come around and get out of the pits, hopefully, while all the rest of that work is still going on. The other good thing about being in that pit is that I don't care what they say. It's hard to time a car around a corner. And that's what those timing lines are. Now, Rusty Wallace makes that late decision to come in. Well, he was watching Jeff Gordon in the 24 car. I'm going to stay out. Then he looks in his mirror, and possibly even the spotter said, hey, everybody's pitting. Don't stay out. He gets in just at the last second. Now, watch the traffic jam as everybody on the front stretch right finishes there. up now. Plus, he's blocked in by the 49 car, Matt Yoakum. Well, Larry Mack, a little bit scratching the radio traffic. The call was actually Billy Wilburn's. In fact, Rusty, not too happy in the radio. He was yelling, we've gone from 2nd to 30th. But Bill Wilburn just showing, telling Rusty Wallace, look, we'll get it back. Just hang tight. I saw all the cars coming. Felt like we needed to do what the others were doing. Daryl, it's the opposite of what you said. You said pass them on pit road. It's easier that way. Well, that can work both ways. That that went bad over there off the of turn two when they didn't know what to do and Rusty wasn't sure and they got behind right there and I think he probably started hollering at them on the radio. Screwed up everything. We had five Damn cars that stayed out. Again. Jeff Gordon, Terry Labonte, oh, Jeff Green, Matt Kenseth, and Elliot Sadler. Goes so, so Damn, this traffic jam. Time I get home, my stuff will be cold. Damn, this traffic jam. Well, back for the restart after the fourth caution of the day for Tony Raines. Jeff Gordon, who did not pit during that caution, leads him back to the green. And Gordon has now led more than 4,000 laps and 68 short track starts, second only among active drivers to Rusty Wallace. 
Jeremy Mayfield in the 19 car now. He right now is in 36th position, four laps down, trying to make some of those laps up. And if there's a place you can make a lap up, Daryl, you can do it here at Bristol. Restarting up in the front, being a lap or so down is not a bad thing. It's better than starting back in 36th spot. You're out of harm's way when you're way up there. During that caution, Billy Wilburn had a walk over to the 49 pit box next door to talk about parking position. Hey, uh, Hambone. Yeah, man. Have you ever seen anything like that before? Oh, yeah. A time or two. After you got through <laughs> chewing on me, I had to go chew on somebody else. Got to right. pass it on down a little bit. Now, that, that wasn't too good. No, it wasn't. I know, I know Rusty was all over Wilburn for calling him in, and uh, Wilburn had to pass some of the paint along to somebody else. And exactly now, right. And now Matt is with Billy. a bit of damage to the right side. Now, as Newman slid down no, the hill, no just a little bit, he caught Craven. Here comes Newman. Four tires. Four guys. Four tires. Fuel. Yeah, Newman's got damage, pretty good damage to the right front, and Craven's got damage all down the right side of his car. See the fender all sticking out there on the 12. It's the other side of the car that's got the damage on it, the right side down the front stretch off into turn one. Looked like Tony, well, just like Ryan maybe came down into Tony, uh, Daryl. He just didn't, Ryan did not want to enter that turn on that, up on the outside because he's already loose. And Sterling was on the bottom, I think it was Sterling, Marlin, underneath Craven. They bumped and that shot Craven up into Newman. I don't think Ricky's got a lot of damage, but he'll probably uh, assess it here or let somebody look at it. See who that was under Craven. It was Brett Bodine. Yeah. Since he got into the nose of the 12 car, that's probably the softest part of the car that he could get into. It probably didn't do any suspension damage to the 32, although it did a lot of body damage, but that doesn't matter. Kenny Schrader. was all drawn up though. There's the first contact. Watch Craven. He's trying to get low, yeah. but Bodine's already there. I'd say that that damage was mostly into the sheet metal on the right side of the 32 car, so I think he'll be okay. He just crumpled the old tide box up a little bit. He did stay on the lead left. Of course, he's on pit road right now. I'm sure for four tires, they'll look at that front end damage. Jamie McMurray, Joe Nemechek, Robbie Gordon, Steve Parker in as well. Matt Yoke. Well, Larry Mack, Ryan Newman making some severe air pressure adjustments on the 12. Remember, this has not been a good racetrack for him. Finishes a 37th and 36th last year, hoping for better things today, especially after setting that new track record. Tinnick Berger. Matt Kenseth qualified way back in the 37th spot, so this morning, crew chief Robbie Reiser told me that he was going to try a contrarian strategy as far as pitting was concerned. If everybody else pitted, he was going to stay out, and that's what they've just done. They've gone for track position, running up in the front of the field right now. They have gone from 37th to 4th. They have not yet pitted. Steve Burns. Well, Dick, Jimmy Spencer has a really good race car today, but on that last caution, they pitted. He came in sixth, went out 15th, and neither Jimmy Spencer nor Tommy Baldwin were happy about it. Jeannie Zelasko. Well, for Mark Martin, it was a situation with the throttle that was sticking during the last stop that he made. He was just going to come in for some right side tires, but they gave it a look, and then he had to come back in. They fixed the throttle, and for a third trip, he took the left side tires. Also some damage, of course, to the left rear side of, of the 48 car of Jimmy Johnson. They are worried about some of the lines back there that might be crimped up, some of the hoses. So they're contemplating making another trip back through. One of the things that we used to try to do is just the same thing what uh, the 17 team said they were going to do. Get out of sync when everybody else comes. Because you try to play the race backwards. I want to be at the front at the end of the day. How am I going to do that? I'm not going to do that coming in with everybody every time. I did not see Steve Parks' role in that, but he's banged up and behind the wall. Jeff Hammond. 
run it. Yeah, last year, if you think about it, guys, we were looking at early on how the 12 and the 20 got together. The 20 turned to 12 right there on the front straightaway, got together with him. And here we are in 2003. And look what's going on again. Do you think maybe that Tony and Ryan may have to sit down and have a little talk about why they keep meeting together under these circumstances? Yeah, I just almost believe, though, that circumstance was a fact that Ryan was just trying to get down before, like you said, Daryl, trying to not enter turn one too high. Yeah, he just, that car just so loose, he just needed to the bottom of the racetrack to make it. Jeff, this is Bristol. It's not a bunch of chance meetings. This is eliminate, eliminate right here. And Ryan Newman just got off pit road as the green flag came out, and he's only about a half a corner. There you see him just in front of our leader, Jeff Gordon, but he is still on the lead lap. He needs a quick caution here in a hurry. I got I to gotta tell you, though, Terry Labonte running in second place right now. No, it's early, but that cat has, through the years, has been mighty good here at Bristol. Right now they have Mike Skinner in the four car kick to the high side. And after a restart, Darrell, they're just, he can't get down. They just keep freight training. He will slide in front of Bill Elliott, though. You can't take a chance, Larry. You can't cut down. You got to know that there's room. Let's show you how Jimmy Johnson and Steve Park uh, both got involved in this. Now, this is from Kenny Wallace's onboard. Ooh, that's out. Steve? And Mike, that one car is behind the wall. Steve Park in the car. The radiator is busted. He got into the back of that 48 car when the 12 spun. They're going to have to replace the radiator, and they've got that sawzall out that you're talking about. Steve Beal taking the nose of the car off. As long as that bad boy will roll and there's no steam coming out of it, you're probably going to be okay. But when you see steam come out of it, you got to come in the pits. All right, there's only two cars officially out of the race, Derek Cope and Tony Rain. Here's another car that's been kicked to the high side, Johnny Benson. He's lost about 10, 12 positions just in the last two or three laps. He can't get down to the bottom of the racetrack. It's like a continuous line of cars. Well, it gets worse. You get all that debris and rubber on your tires, and you can't get to the bottom even if you can get, if there's an opening. <laughs> Let's move up to fifth place. Elliot Sadler, who has won here, holding off Kurt Busch, who has won here, holding off Dale Jr. And this is somewhat old tires versus new tires. Remember, Elliot Sadler is one of the cars that did not pit Kurt Busch in the 97s. He loses the position to Dale Earnhardt Jr. Those guys have fresher tires. Brian Newman trying to keep from losing a lap. Boy, I tell you Gordon. what, he's not giving Jeff any room either. He's making it hard for him. Well, you know, but that's his job, though, Darrell. He's trying to stay on that lead lap or stay at least in position to get that lap back. But I tell you, he has his hands full of that race car. Whoa, Mike Skinner coming back. Kurt Busch got him a couple laps ago. Skinner working the inside, and Kurt Busch's car just won't stay at the bottom. I think he's trying that. I tell you, if you could ever get your car to run in about a lane up from everybody else, you could pass a lot of race cars. And sometimes that happens here. Hadn't in a long time, but when you can start running around people on the outside, everybody fights for the bottom. Oh, it's a beautiful thing. They are Fox tracks, Kurt Busch, Mike Skinner, Bobby Labonte, about three and a half, three and three quarter seconds behind our leader, Jeff Gordon. Three seconds don't sound like much, no. but it's a fourth of a racetrack. And now Skinner's climbed the hill. He gives up a spot to Bobby Labonte, one to Jimmy Spencer, and Tony Stewart's coming. I got to tell you, Ryan Newman's going to get turned around again if he keeps racing these lead cars like he is. Second place, Terry Labonte goes by. And you know, Daryl, of all the racetracks we go to, maybe other than Markville, this is the hardest racetrack in the world to get out of the way. Well, he knows when he moves up to let somebody go, it opens the door, everybody goes by. Here's how you get someone out of your way, Larry. We talked about that in the opening. I mean, everybody's almost running the same speed. That's about the only way you can make it happen. And that's what got Johnny Benson kicked to the high side, where he lost about a dozen or so positions. That, uh, hear that wheel spin when he gets on the gas, starts up off the corner. That's what you fight here all day. And Larry, I know it's not legal, but if I could, this is one place I'd like to have traction control. <laughs> yes, it would. Make those rear tires hook up only when they want to. There you see Kurt Busch. He's kicked to the high side. He's lost a couple positions. Now he's looking to lose another one from Mike Skinner in the four car. But you talk about that wheel spin, Daryl. I was shocked this morning at how low of gears these guys are putting in these race cars. We used to race a 529, maybe a 543. They're racing 550s and we're looking.
looking for 567. Remember, the higher number, the lower gear. You know why? Straightaways are 650 feet long. You got to have passing gear, baby. Here's this week's uh, not-so-secret number in the Via Grand Marshal Per Day contest. Log on to NASCAR.com or FoxSports.com and enter to your chance to win. The winner will pull cable to cameras half a mile away, help park cars, start the race, ride in the pace car, and wave the checkered flag at Rockingham. It's a busy man. Ah, what a deal. From 37th starting spot, Matt Kenseth, the Winston Cup point leader, has climbed to third. And that sigh of relief you heard about 20 laps ago was Robbie Reiser, Matt Kenseth, Jack Rouse being the points leader, getting to the front of the pack. Once you can get there, you feel much better about it after starting that deep. Well, one thing I like about these, these guys that stayed out on that uh, last caution was these tires are known to go 150, 60 laps here without very little give up. So I don't think tires is a real big issue here, particularly until you get up to around 150 laps. The, the thing, Daryl, that would concern me a little bit is right now, Jeff Gordon is up there leading the race on those older tires. He can run his own race because he's not in traffic. Another 10 or 12 laps, he's going to be catching that traffic. It's hard to maneuver your race car the more laps you get on those tires. They handle better with all the fenders on them, though. I promise oh, you that. You. Closing on 100 laps here at Bristol Motor Speedway. Winston Cup Racing on Fox is brought to you by Aaron's Sales and Lease Ownership. Let Aaron's drive your dreams home today. This is the Visa Race Break along with uh, Jeff Hamlin, Chris Myers from the Hollywood Hotel, Jeff Gordon leading Terry Levani, Dale Earnhardt Jr. running third as we've gone through 105 laps. We heard the Larry McReynolds, uh, Darrell Waltrip, and Mike Joy talking about passing gear. Let's expound on that a little bit for the audience to understand that and how it affects the race we're watching. What they're trying to do right now, Chris, is they're having a lot of trouble getting up off the corners and to get under these guys, you've got to have either more horsepower or you've got to have a little bit lower gear and get that bite right up off the corner. That's what they're talking about. And Larry, as I found out walking through the garage, these guys are running a lot lower gear than normal. I mean, they're way up there in the 557, 550 range, which normally at Bristol, which gears we used to run and win with, would be normally a 543. So uh, I find it really strange that a lot of these guys are going this slow, but they're trying to hook it up. As we see earlier, they're having a lot of trouble still. Yeah, I mean, they're pulling that low gear. And we yesterday in the final practice, we had some in-car audio, and you couldn't hit, push the throttle all the way down. You were well up on the straightway. But what they want, when you do push that throttle down, like Daryl said, straightaway is so short, you want that lunge at least while you're wide open. A uh, low gear here is very difficult to drive because of that wheel spin, and that's what gets you jumping sideways up off the corner. You get the rear tires up in the air, get them spinning, and uh, you spin that bad boy out. But I tell you a guy that, I, again, I'm going to mention it because we don't get a chance, a lot of chances to talk about old Jerry Labonte right there, but he's up there right there behind Jeff Gordon and working on him, and I think he's going to get the lead here for long. Friday night here in Bristol, the Boys and Girls Clubs and Girls Incorporated Children Devoted Charities in the area honored the whole Labonte family. Bob, his wife Martha, their Winston Cup winning sons, Terry and Bobby, and it was it was really a neat deal. David Green, Ned Jarrett, and I got to talk about the Labonte's and their devotion to this sport as a family, and it was, it was really a touching evening, and uh, who knows, it might have helped get Terry up on the wheel a little bit here, because he's having a great race so far. It's always fun to go to a community and into a town where they recognize recognize you and then, then realize that you can do great things or have done great things if you notice up in our crawl right there up at the top of the screen you see this is laps to pit this is for fuel and tires and there's about five cars there that's within about a 40 lap window of needing to, to pit for tires and fuel and this is all happening right in the midst of our leader trying to force his way through these cars we're at 113 oh, laps in the food city back. 500 you work with and, and again once you get up behind, to the back of the field like this and you start putting pressure on cars keep trying to keep them going a lap down that's when you have trouble and you got pressure right in your mirror fortunately it's your teammate got yeah. a good idea there's some good communication going on there man <laughs> well dw what jeff Ford is telling crew chief robbie loomis the car is big time loose he's trying to hang on to it till the window robbie told me somewhere around lap 165 to 170 the five car terry lobani's teammate a little tight in the center the last time he let a race and Labonte won two. Terry Labonte won here in 1984 and in 1995. And 
you got you to remember that 95 race, Dale poked him coming off the turn four here, and he went across the side, uh, finish line into the fence. Then in 98, I think it was, or 99 back there, he was going to win the race, and he and Dale got together again. Well, DW, one thing is best finish this year, Terry Labonte is 16th. They feel like they've run better than their finishes have shown every race, and they feel like this is a place of Bristol. He's had good success in the past. This is where they can turn up the wick, get a good top 10 finish, and try to turn things around on this five team. Yeah, man, I'm sure they would welcome a top 10 finish because five races, he has finished 16th or worse in every one of the races this year. Well, he's got a great, I love his crew chief, Jim Long. He's a smart guy, good guy. He and Terry, they really are a good marriage. I think they communicate well together. Terry, I think, just needs a good round or two, get his confidence up, get, his, get him fired up, and uh, you might see a lot of good runs out of old Terry. 20th place battle here, Kenny Schrader and Ward Burton. Now, remember Rusty Wallace, who was 22nd on the last restart. He has now climbed his way up to 13th, uh, but it's taken him a while to get to Greg Biffle. Biffle's got a good car today just ahead of him, and you see Rusty's eight seconds off the lead. Now, Larry, I mean, I, I wanted to stay out because I had no idea we were going to go this many green laps. Now, I'm not worried about my handling on my car, but I'm starting to worry about my gas tank. Well, no doubt. Robbie Loomis, Jim Long, all the crew chiefs for those cars that stayed out, Raymond Fox for Elliott Sadler, they're looking at that scoreboard, and they're seeing 122 laps. They know within about, the only thing that's helping them stretch it a little bit is all those cautions, because here three cautions equal about one green lap, but it won't be long. They'll have to come pit road because they need fuel. And if I have to pit up under green here, woe be unto me. Yikes. Fourth place changed hands as Jimmy Spencer and Matt Kenseth go past Tony Stewart. Before the race, Spencer got out his Sharpie and wrote something on the hood just to the left of the dog there. What, what was it? I expect it was Mongo. It says, DW knows Bristol. <laughs> Mongo. Oh. <laughs> uh. oh, yeah. This was right before Jimmy climbed in the car to buckle himself in. <laughs> You were the man. <laughs> Ed Bristol. All right. Darrell won here 12 times more than any other driver. And Jimmy right now is in fourth place. Clear all around, baby. Just keep floating it in there. Keep floating it in there, baby. Nice and smooth. You reel them in. Get back in your groove now. Nice and smooth. Reel them in. It's like he's going fishing. Yeah, but... He is definitely, <laughs> he's got the line out, and he is reeling them in. That dog can fish. Yes, sir. Steve. And remember, guys, on the last pit stop, Jimmy Spencer came in sixth, was one out 15. Back up to fourth. He said his car today is as good as the one he drove yesterday, and he felt like he was going to win that push race if he had not broken a wheel late. Third place for yeah, Spencer. There's no question. He had fire in his eye after he broke that wheel yesterday. And the reason that wheel broke, I talked to Tommy Baldwin, who is his crew chief on the Winston Cup car, owns the Bush car, as they had some loose lug nuts. But you could tell he was so disappointed. And you and I talked this morning, Mike, felt like that was going to fire him up to win this race. So Jeff Gordon leads it with a loose race car, trying to hold on to his next pit stop. His teammate, Terry Labonte, is just a bumper back. Then it's Jimmy Spencer, Tony Stewart, Dale Jr. Under caution, we'll show you why in a minute. Mike Skinner's car hard hit in turn two and pit stops. See you. Jimmy Spencer wants no adjustments to Mongo, just four tires for Spencer. Better stop this time. Let's go to Matt. Now, Terry Labonte, no adjustments, even though his car was a tick tight in the center. A chassis adjustment on Gordon's car. He was loose everywhere. It's going to be a race off. Looks like Gordon gets him, Mike. I'm going to tell you what, Jimmy Spencer's crew, Tommy Ball and Led, I mean, they, they had great pit stops last week at Darlington. They're backing right. it up here today. They got the next pit, not the best, not the A and B pit, but they got the C pit. They don't have to fight anyone coming in, and he can stay back in his box and not get blocked in by Dale Earnhardt Jr. There is Jimmy Spencer's crew. I think, I think Jr. was a little bit wanted by a... I think he didn't like him. I think he's mad at Mongo. Mongo, why don't you go on? Does your dog bite? It's not my dog. <laughs> Man, 
sale. Now remember, no speedometers in these cars. During the pace lap before the race, the pace car leads everybody around at the pit road speed so they can get that measurement on their tack. And as they say in the ads, your mileage may be different. I'll tell you what, these guys may be happy, but I'm going to tell you a crew that's not going to be happy. Tony Stewart, he was fourth when that caution came out, and he goes out 15. Here we'll see our pit stop efficiency, and remember the pit road time over here, that's the entire time spent on pit road, including, but look at Earnhardt Jr., 29 seconds. He goes from fifth to third, but I'm going to tell you, the real winner right there, third to second. I know it was only one position, but it puts you right up there behind that leader. Mike Skinner fought the wall in turn two, and the wall won. That right yes, front was yes, on yes. fire when it came in. Bergman. Mike Skinner, that was an awfully hard hit. I watched you shaking your hand, your leg. Are you okay? I will be. I just shook up a little bit. Uh, man, you can hit hard at Bristol as you can anywhere, I guess. Uh, uh, Kodak car is awful good. I was really proud of our Pontiac today. Uh, right front tire blew out. We must have ran over something. Uh, he's got medical people all around him. He's going to go off to the care center and get taken care of, Mike. There's the aftermath of Mike Skinner's hard shot into the turn one and two wall, the home track for Morgan McClure race, Racing. Short ride home and an early one for them today. Our aerial coverage provided by Budweiser. There's a look at the 160,000 seat stadium that is Bristol Motor Speedway, the dragway adjacent here in Thunder Valley. Lot of facility. We need to document that Dave Blaney in the 77, Casey Mears in the 41 that were involved in those wrecks earlier, they are back out on the racetrack making laps. This is one place I think sometimes the more metal you can take off, the better off you are. As long as you keep those four wheels rolling forward, Daryl. Rolling, rolling, rolling. You got to keep rolling. How about yesterday's winner, Kevin Harvick, who won the Channel Lock 250. He's up to eighth place after pit stops as we get set for the restart. What do you say on a Sunday afternoon? We vibrate some speakers. Sounds good to me. What do you think, Daryl? Let's, let's crank, crank it up.
Jack Sprague underneath Benson. It's almost the same thing I think that we saw happen to Ryan Newman and uh, Tony Stewart a while ago. I mean, he would just kept coming down and there was nowhere else for him to go. You get a run on a guy, you know you got the you got the advantage on the bottom right there, but uh, the guy's got to give you a little room. If you get that left wheel down on the apron as you enter that corner, you got to be able to slide up. And uh, with that car on the outside of you, either take you, you try to keep from taking both cars out, what you try to do. Watch this near miss of Robbie Gordon's. Jamie McMurray in the 42 just sneaks by as well. 150 laps. Jeff Gordon leads. This is NASCAR on Fox. NASCAR Winston Cup Racing on Fox is brought to you by Chevy Trucks, the most dependable, longest-lasting trucks on the road. Green flag has just waved to restart after the seventh caution. Seven cautions for 39 laps so far. We're not quite one-third distance. Now what the leaders are having to deal with this deep into the race is a lot of lap cars up there trying to get their lap back, like Joe Nemechek in the 25, Jeff Green in the 30, as well as Brett Bodine in the 11 car. Boy, Rusty Wallace just about lost it right in front of Bill Elliott. He had it sideways, and had, I think if it had been anybody else but Bill Elliott, he'd been out of here. Elliott was able to correct and uh, woe up before, so Rusty got it saved. It, it, was, it, could have been, it could have been big. Here he comes down in the corner. Oh, no wonder. Heck, he's all the way down on the apron. I don't know what he's doing way down there. It looked like the feet of the group accordioned in front of him, Daryl. <laughs> and that was the best choice to go down there. I know his car's handling good, but he ain't handling that good. <laughs> Kurt Busch working the outside of our point leader, Matt Kenseth. Kurt, you think a little bit of bite to help you? Yeah, it's it for What's happening is if I try to cut down low and hold it on the bottom, the car just dips over on the right front and he wedges itself. So yeah, we we'll probably just need to put a flight back in it. Gotcha. We'll get you next time. And pretty much bite and wedge is the same thing. And what that is is more weight on the right front and the left rear that helps you from being loose. And what he's, I think he's saying is my right front spring's too soft. I can't do that now. I can't fix that. So Dick, let me put some more wedge back in it. He's had trouble keeping the car down on the racetrack, Larry, because it has been loose all day long. Earlier in the race, we watched him run in the high lane. There was some question as to whether he was doing that deliberately. He was not. He simply couldn't keep the car down. So that's what they've got to do to win this race, get it to run on the bottom better. Jimmy Spencer puts his nose to the wind. Yeah, he does. And just to pick up a little bit on what they were talking about, you work on these cars diagonally. If it's rolling too, over on the right front too far, screw that right rear down. That'll tighten that car up. I just could see Jimmy Spencer, was, he has had the determination that he was going to lead this race. Well, the car broke on him yesterday when he was in contention for the win, and I have never seen Spencer that mad, except as a result of contact, as he was when he had to climb out of that car early. So he's on a mission, Darrell. Well, there's several cars that, you know, every time there's a caution, some of these guys get their cars better. You know, it was loose, and they get it tightened up. Now the driver can go forward, and one of them is old Mark Martin. He's got that thing in the wind. He's passed a lot of race cars, and he knows how to win Bristol. Right now, Mark is back here in seventh, 17th position. There you see Tony Stewart, a 20 car. I think he got blocked in on that last pit stop, really put him behind, Matt. Larry Mack, it was pretty much the accordion effect on pit road, too. The five car, Terry Labonte, stopped long. The 10 car, Johnny Benson, stopped short. That meant that Tony Stewart didn't have a lot of room to work. He was blocked in, went from fourth all the way to 15th. The two cars lost time as well from the 49. We told you about that story earlier. The guy who really has the best stall now is Jeff Gordon. With the 12 car lap down, that means he doesn't have to worry about anybody in front. He can stop wherever he wants in his box. What I like about Jimmy Spencer's car, guys, I watch him go into the corner. That thing almost stops. He left off way early. Gordon will close up a teeny bit on him getting in. But when he turns it and mats it, he's not got any wheel spin. That thing is rocketing up off of the corner. Well, I'm talking about outside corner. Clear all around. Two liter. Mongo. 
All right. <laughs> that would be the infamous Donald Effling, his spotter. I knew I recognized that voice. <laughs> but I tell you, they've been fast ever since they unloaded, Mike, Daryl. Brand new race car and qualified seventh and every practice they've been right up there. And again, Mike, I couldn't agree more. I think that run yesterday just gave them that much more confidence because it was him and Tommy Baldwin together yesterday. I'll tell you about another fellow who had a great run yesterday and who's coming, and that is Kevin Harvick. Yes, who sir. won yesterday's race. Yes, he sir. just passed Jerry Nadeau for sixth place. Jeannie? Well, history class is in session for the 29 car, learning from the past, that is. First, a crew chief change is Kevin Harvick is reunited with his former Bush crew chief, Don Barrier. And second, Barrier has reminded Harvick a few times throughout the day, whenever possible, keep an eye on the two-car for Rusty Wallace and his history here. Barrier said he's won, won 11 races here. That's close. How about nine? But look at Harvick, up from 20. About a crew chief change. He and Barrier worked together in the Bush Series. Had a great deal of success. I like that familiar voice. I want to hear that guy that I'm accustomed to hearing. I want to hear that tone. I want to hear that confidence that he brings to me. That's a huge part of the crew chief. Yeah, I mean, they won that 2001 Bush Championship together, won a couple of races here together in the Bush Series. Right behind Kevin Harvick. Familiar driver with a, a new paint scheme, a one-time paint scheme for Brett Bodine. Uh, commemorating, if you will, memorializing is a better word, the 10th anniversary of this race. During that weekend, we lost the defending Winston Cup champion, Alan Kulwicki. He and Mark Brooks, the son of Hooters far, uh, founder, Dan Duncan, their marketing manager, and the pilot were lost coming back from an appearance at Knoxville, Tennessee. The weekend of this race, that shield was created to memorialize them and the date. It happened at this race, so it was Dan Duncan's son who took a memorial Polish victory lap in Allen's honor around the track in a show car identically painted to the number 11 that Brett Bodine runs today. Allen was NASCAR's last owner-driver champion, last man to, to score that feat. It'll perhaps never be done again. And he said, if by winning this championship, I can help someone try just a little harder to achieve their dreams, then I'll feel I've been a worthy champion. And he was. And it was a classic battle. Last race of the year, nip and tuck with Bill Elliott, Bill driving for Junior Johnson, who has been a powerhouse in the sport for all, these, all those years. Allen out there, the underdog, and he wins the championship. And I think the fitting motto that things as it was said about Allen Quickie, he did it his way. Yes, he did. Matt? Jimmy Spencer. By the way, trouble oh, on the back. Jack trouble on the back. Sprague. Jack Sprague, caution is out. I tell you guys, going to be glad to see this, Larry, because I was watching him as Dale Jr. He was falling back. He lost a couple of spots. Now, the last caution flag came out when Sprague got into Johnny Benson. This time, Sprague spins. Was he alone? I thought I saw a 10 car go by its some point in time there. I don't know how close, but eight caution today. We need to note that Joe Nemechek and the 25, Jeff Gordon's teammate, actually got his lap back at Jimmy Spencer at the line that time. No, oh, no, he's already gone. Boy, you Johnny know, Benson was very lucky. <laughs> Sprague may have been looking back saying, whoa, here comes that 10 car. I better end him while he was looking back. He got behind on his But look chair. how high he was in turn two. He was up there where there's no grip. We've seen so many cars spin on the high side of the exit of these corners. I'm telling you, the spotter said, hey, watch that 10 car. He's coming up on you. And he was. He was looking at him in a rear view mirror. Now we're seeing some of our leaders come to pit road, but just like before, Jeff Gordon in the 24 stayed out. Terry Labonte in the 5. A lot of the cars stayed out. In fact, Bobby Labonte was all the, way, all the way on pit road in 18 and went back on the racetrack. Mongo on pit road by himself. Dale Earnhardt Jr. did come with him along with Bill Elliott and Sterling Marlin, but Darrell, 25 laps, I believe I would have stayed out. Well, Jr., his car was going backwards. Uh, he needed to come down and make an adjustment. But I know Tommy Baldwin, he's trying to get off sync here with these people just like you talked about earlier. 
don't have a problem with that. Steve? Hey, guys, I was just listening to the radio communication. They discussed staying out. Jimmy said, no, let's come on in, get tires. If this thing goes with a long green flag run, I'll get right back to the front. Four tires, no other adjustments on that number seven car of Jimmy Spencer. Boy, that's confidence. Watch outside, watch outside, watch outside, watch outside. 01 outside, 01 still outside. Just make sure you beat them. And I mean, right there, you heard the spotter and the crew chief talking to Jimmy Spencer. You have to talk him in and out of these pits. It's tight. You've got all this headrest, a full face helmet. You have to help these guys on and off pit road. Keep them out of trouble. And as at many teams, the crew chief calls the car entering and leaving the pit. The spotter calls it out on the racetrack. But I guess that varies greatly team to team. Who has that responsibility? And what kind of sight the spotter has as far as seeing pit road? There are the spotters. They are atop the end of the front straightaway. Sweet Seer. Little Mongo. Final note on Alan Kowicki's championship winning Underbird car. Larry and Pam Beam bought that car. It had been pretty well used up. They got Alan's former crewmen to completely restore it. They've had it at their home in Florida, taken it to several vintage events, and it's now moving to the North Carolina Motorsports Hall of Fame. And we'll enter there April 1st. Very fitting tribute to a unique champion. You know, last time it came out, uh, come out of the pits, Dale Jr. ran into the back of the seven car. Oh, I, no, that's all he's trying to do there is kind of, I think he was trying to beat that uh, 01 car and he just accelerated. He, he, he would not normally have hit him, but see there on the Spencer's back bumper, he already had made himself some extra clearance right there. So he didn't get into it. See, I think the reason the 48 car stopped, Daryl, I think the stop and go paddle man, this guy right down here, he just had flipped it around to go. Some of the field was still going by. That's it ex exactly, Larry. And there is the man with the stop sign, the lollipop. Uh, we've called it for a long, long time there. Ooh, lolly, lolly, lollipop. see the 01 beats Dale Jr. off of pit road. There you see Jeff Burton leaving as well. Eight caution flags this afternoon at 185 laps. Jeannie? Front tire changer Charlie Brock of the 01 working with pneumonia today. He's been sick since Tuesday but definitely wanted to be a part of this team and out there today Jerry Nadu liking his car just had to free it up a bit. We'll see how it goes. They're going green. We had about 12 of the lead lap cars stay out. I'll tell you one thing, the Bodine or the uh, Bonnie brothers today are looking mighty racy, running second and third. Now Jeff Green in that 30 car, he came to pit road, got fresh tires. He should be able to hold Jeff Gordon off and get his lap back, especially if we catch a quick caution. Green's number 30 on the tail end of the lead lap now. With Jeff Gordon, your leader. Yeah, I was surprised he got lapped because at one point there, he was up in the field pretty good, but then all of a sudden the car must have gotten real loose with him. And this is where your crew chief, your spotter's telling you whatever you got in that race car right now, you got to get it. We need to get this lap back. Oh, actually, what the crew chief's telling you, you see that debris? <laughs> <laughs> Dick Bergeron, why didn't Kurt Busch pin? Well, he was going to pin, Mike, and on the radio, and just before he should have come in to pin, he said, we got to come in, let's take two rounds. yourself a little bit now you got a good car and don't use it all up here we got a long way to go baby give a call to ricky rudd in eighth place in the motorcraft u.s air force wood brothers ford i have seen that car in victory circle here jeff hammond that's right mike i've uh, been watching ricky he's been making a pretty dramatic climb from 34th all the way up to eighth place right now but his day has not been uneventful right now Early on, you can see right here on lap 14, he avoided the Michael Walter wreck, which also involved Dale involved Jarrett from his in-car camera. 
But he has really been making a really strong run all day long. He's avoided about two or three other accidents. We've been watching him, and he's really having a really smooth run. And as you said earlier, Darrell, that 21 car has been in Victor Lane here at Bristol. He just went by Kurt Busch, and that was a battle for seventh. And, th and there, they stayed out. But just remember, when this team won the race here two years ago with Elliott Sadler, Pat Trice and the crew chief, how did he win that race? He had a good car, but they stayed out. You got it. About 165 laps on one set of tires. And they're pitting on the backstretch. Led to NASCAR having a look at making this all one pit road. Well, Kurt Busch, I'm not so sure that I wouldn't he I wouldn't have been on pit road. He's losing a lot of positions He there. should have come to the pit. He should have come in and worked on his car because his car's not very good right now. The car not very good right now is to uh, get you in trouble. Boy, Dale Earnhardt Jr. Oh, just about oh, turned oh, Kyle oh. Petty sideways. Well, he was trying to move Kyle a little bit to get by, and instead he became the victim as Kurt Busch took advantage, and now Robbie Gordon. Behind them, Jeff Burton. Whoa, trouble over there, guys. Ooh, three wide down the back stretch. That was, somebody has to give. Oh, there it is. Oh, boy. Somebody's giving, somebody's taking, somebody's giving and taking. And nobody wrecked. And Mark they, Martin. They do. Inside Here break. they go. I spoke too soon. Somebody had to wreck in that chain of events. And they're start, still spinning here to start finishing. 30 line. car gets his lap back. 19, 19 car. car does. Now, Jeremy was three laps down, so he'll get one of those laps back. Ninth caution lap, 199. They couldn't keep, it, it, it just accordions, as you said, and it just kept, somebody's going to pay the price sooner We're or later. that first pit stop. We got some crash cart, guys. It's killed. Crash cart. Now, Darrell, this wreck happened in the middle of the front stretch, but it all started about the middle of the back stretch. Dale Jr. got in trouble off of turn two, racing Kyle Petty. Yep. They carried that all the way around to here before somebody actually got wrecked. It started there, a quarter of a lap ahead of Mark Martin. Right. Now, you see the 99, he gets into Dale Jr., the 48 gets into the 99. Six gets into the, the 40. Nine, the 48 <laughs> goes down under the... 99, he has to check up. Here comes these other guys, and so on, and so on, and so on. Or Scooby, Dooby, Dooby. Maybe the driver can, Daryl, but can these cars react quickly enough to miss this kind of thing? You got people behind you. you, you it's what I call track presence. When you know where everybody is, you can't let up. You know if you do, you're gonna get hit from behind and spun out. But when there's nowhere to go. At Dick Berger, this is the caution that Tommy Baldwin was, was going for because a lot of those leaders did it. Well, Matt Kenseth is also in the pits right now. Justin Knott says changing the front tires. Jeremy West on the back. This is maybe the very best pit crew of all. Pulled out the right front fender. There he goes. On the front side, Jeff Gordon, Bobby Labonte, Rusty Wallace, Ricky Rudd, and Tony Stewart. Now along with Kenny Schrader, Johnny Benson, Ward Burton. Kevin Harvick, and actually he's the leader of the race in the 29 car, but remember he won this Bush race yesterday, and we're a long way from the end, but he won this Bush race by running about 180 laps on tires and fuel. And Terry Labonte's back up in second. In the five car, he stayed out. So for the front balance cam, the at and cam on board Kenny Schrader, there is a spinning Mark Martin to bring out the ninth caution at Bristol. Bristol, Tennessee, 208 laps complete. Kevin Harvick, the leader. Jimmy Spencer, second. Terry Labonte, Jerry Nadu, and Robbie Gordon. Slides up and hits the turn two wall, surrendering fifth place. No caution. He gets it back going. He was by himself. Just lost it. I don't think his car's in very good shape now, though, guys. I mean... Stuff hanging all off of it, flopping around. It looks like a Bristol car, but I don't think that's the way to go. Let's see what happens here. He and Junior were racing each other real hard there a minute ago. Down into the corner he goes, and uh, the back end snaps loose. Kissed it pretty hard to that right rear quarter panel. Didn't look like it hit any of the wheels or tires. I think his right rear is damaged. 
he's going to have to come to pit road or wreck. You hear him, he says he feels like he has a flat tire unless he's got debris on the tire. Steve Burns. There he is. He pitted last on lap 152, so he's been on that set over 60 laps. And the more laps you get on these things, yeah, I mean, it's still a, it's a good tire for here, but the more laps you get, you get up out of the groove. It's, it's just hard to control that race car. Mark Martin brought out that last caution. Here's Jeannie. Boy, guys, I don't know... Kenny Wallace after him. Starting car don't look all that good. Looks like he's having a little bit of problems with it. Can't tell for sure what. Probably loose. Got for the lead. Battle for the lead. Jimmy Spencer in that seven car. Remember, his tires are 50 laps fresher than Kevin Harvick in the 20, 29. I think Kevin Harvick knows it. Well, we got one sideways on the front stretch. Gary Nadeau in the 01. Brian, Brian Newman caused that. Brian got he and the, the 01 got together coming up off the four. Is out. That's too bad. Nobody gets a lap back from Jimmy Spencer. Now get Jerry Nadeau. Be ready, be ready, be ready, be ready. Jerry Nadeau was front front end, bad front end damage. He's got some fire up under the car. He needs to get that thing fired. There you go, buddy. if he'll be able to steer that one back around to the garage or not. If we see that again, I think you'll see the 12 car and, and, and he were having a real go at it. 12 cars, one lap down. Here's a look, Daryl. 01 got under the 12 going into turn three. Ryan went up the hill and then and, and the 01 got up under him. They start off the corner here and, ooh. I think the 11 may have, I think they, ch I think he kind of checked up and got run over from the back. Chain reaction again, we've seen it all day long. Now, Mike and Darrell, this is a box I don't like to be painted in. Kevin Harvick in the 29, Terry Labonte in the 5. It's been about 80 laps since they were to pit road, but if they pit, and it looks like they're going to stay out, if they pit, you go from running second and third all the way back to about 26th and 27th, but you're sitting out there and you're halfway through a run. Bad when you got to pound the hood pins with a hammer to get them off. Here's how Dale Jr. saw that one. Jerry Nadu has climbed out and walked away. I don't think he's working on his fitness program right now either. Dale Jr. got a little damage in that. Nothing serious, I don't think, but he did cave the grill in. He's not happy with the 12 car. And I mean, this place here, you'll see drivers do things that you've never seen them do before and you never would expect them. As I've said time and time again, without being redundant, you have to check those feelings in out there on the highway and leave them there while you're here. And you can't let something like that happen and let it go. You've got to get rid of it. Jeannie? Jerry, you want to you wanna tell us what happened out there, why you were upset, why you ran to the 12 pit? It's typical Bristol. Obviously, our minds are somewhere else. Um, it's just a shame. We had such a great car for the U.S. Army Pontiac, and a damn lab car can't use his head. I don't know what Ryan was doing. I mean, I, ha I was underneath him. He kept coming down, coming down. I tried it for four freaking laps, and obviously, Fred Bodine got into me. It's a shame. I hate it for the U.S. Army Pontiac. Our hearts are with our soldiers today. What did you tell him when you got over there? He needs to use his head. Jerry Nadeau out of the race, most likely with a lot of damage to the front end of his car after battling Ryan Newman and then getting punted right by Brett Bodine. Ryan Newman in that 12 car up there, pace cars off. Remember, he's one lap down. Jerry Nadeau referred to him as a lap car. He is a lap down up there trying to get his lap back on Jimmy Spencer. John Andretti spins 
coming off pit road, but he gathers it back up. We're okay. That was in front of the leaders by about a quarter lap. You'll find Jeff Burton. Ford, if you haven't looked lately, look again. Jeff Burton's day. Trying to work his way through the field. And finds himself up at fifth place. And you can hear Dale Earnhardt trouble turn two. Into that throttle. Ricky Rudd, the 21. I don't think Ricky Bobby Labonte, the 18 car. Caution is out. Caution is out. Bobby was the first car to go around. 97's there, too. Kurt Busch. They're trying to get going. Here comes Jimmy Spencer, the leader, off turn two. Should make it okay. Kurt Busch gets going. I don't, I don't know that those cars got much damage on them. 97 looks clean. Got a little dent in the right front, not much. Bobby's got a little damage to the right rear quarter panel. I don't see any big, no big problem with any of those cars. Let's see what happened. Left side of your screen, Bobby Labonte, the purple car. He just gets to, gets turned around by his teammate. <laughs> his teammate, I think, may have given him a little punt there, but the two car checked up in front of him. Teammate Tony Stewart, that 20 car. put us under the 11th caution flag of the day here at Bristol Motor Speedway. You're watching NASCAR on Fox. NASCAR on Fox is brought to you by Craftsman, the official tools of NASCAR and NHRA. By the Italian Chicken Sandwich. Back for a limited time, have it your way at Burger King. By Coca-Cola, the official soft drink of NASCAR. And by Singular, the wireless company that fits you best. And this is a piece of race break as Fox welcomes you back live here at Bristol. Jeff Gordon has led for much of the race, but currently Jimmy Spencer leading. It has been brutal at uh, Bristol already. We're under our 11th caution. That's the most of any race uh, this year. And this is the kind of wear and tear that goes on when they bring the cars in, hoping they can get them back out. Exactly. Right now you see guys using sawzalls. I saw there they're cutting the sheet metal away. Hammers. I mean, that's it's the two favorite to uh, tools. Whenever you come up here to a place like Bristol, you've got to have the ability to fix your race cars and fix it quickly. In the Hollywood Hotel with Jeff Hammond, Chris Myers, let's talk about the leader, Jimmy Spencer. Here's a guy who got a phone call late last year that said, hey, you're no longer with our race team. He was fighting pretty much for a job and certainly has battled back a 46-year-old driver. He's done a lot for the sport with a chance to win today. Yeah, he really has done an outstanding job. And since he's joined up with Jimmy Smith and especially with Tommy Baldwin, I think Tommy's got some magic as far as the crew chief is concerned, putting these two guys together. And they used to be fierce competitors up north in the modified division, but right now they're really Really, you know, in tune together. And Jimmy Spencer, I don't think he's ever looked better in his Winston Cup career right no, now. And we're getting word the 30 car has been black flagged. So they right uh, have to bring the car in and uh, 38, 38 car. right there. I think you notice he's got some uh, debris hanging out the right side of the car. And I think Steve Burns is down there and can tell us more about it. Yeah, Jeff, it's a tough break for Elliott Sadler. He had raised his way into the top ten after fighting an ill-handling race car, but NASCAR has black flagged him. They said there's sheet metal hanging off the right side door area, and he's going to have to bring that 38 car to pit road. Yeah, Jeff, uh, just as we look at uh, some of what's going on here at Bristol, a thought on uh, Jerry Nadeau's comments of following uh, the incident with uh, Ryan Newman? Well, as you can see right now, there's a lot of close contact right there. That appears to me to be a part of another car's bumper, and it probably got together right there and has ripped it loose and is actually stuck right in the area of the jack stop. You see right now the jack man jacking the car up, and they're going to try to extract it. There it is. They pulled it out, and that's all it was. He got together with another race car and ripped that bumper support away, forced him to come to pit road, but now they're 
might take the advantage of it and put four tires on him. Hopefully, he'll work his way back up here. Elliott being a former winner here at Bristol. Right, and that was in the uh, then 21 yeah, car. 21 that car, that's Ricky right. Rudd has. So let's go back for a moment and, and talk about, uh, as we see Elliott Sadler uh, pull away, uh, <laughs> Ryan Newman and what happened here as uh, Jerry Nadeau was very frustrated afterwards. Well, you see right there, go down the corner, and it looked like everybody kind of checked up the two car, then the 18, the 20 got in the 18, around with the 97. So, I mean, a lot of close racing here. As you'll see in a minute, you'll also see the 21 car. He got booted in the back end by the 49 car of Kenny Schrader. And this is from the onboard with the uh, motorcraft of the uh, Ford Motorcraft Air Force car. Uh, Ricky Rudd is having a, a great run after started, starting 34th. He has worked his way through a number of mishaps, and that's part of us surviving at this track. Yeah, when you come to Bristol, it really is all about survival. You try to get track position whenever possible. You try to keep your co cool and try to keep your composure as much as you can. But as you can see, even when you're doing the best you can to keep your nose clean, a lot of times you can become a victim real easy. At Kevin Harvick, uh, no a driver has ever done the double here, winning the Bush race uh, Saturday at Bristol and then winning the uh, the Winston Cup race. And uh, Kevin Harvick has a chance with that. All right, this is I find this exciting because you talk about short tracks, short tempers, and there's a look at uh, Kevin Harvick who won Saturday's uh, Bush race. Uh, let's take again uh, how how Ryan Newman, uh, certainly with Jerry Nadeau, uh, was Ryan Newman at fault in your opinion? Well, I mean, what I saw on the replay, him been a lap, lap down car and it racing awful hard right there, but he really pinched uh, Jerry Nadeau, Nadeau down right there off that corner and got it, all this going. Obviously, the 11 car finished him off, but they definitely were racing extremely hard when you consider that Jerry was still on the lead lap and Ryan was already lapped down. All right, we have him uh, complaining to his uh, crew chief uh, following the incident, and uh, you heard Jerry Nadeau's comment before when he talked to Jeannie Zalaska. Here he's walking over. He's in the pit area, the crew area, with Ryan Newman. Yeah, and that's something, what place you really don't want to be as far as a driver. You need to bring your boys. You need to bring your own army if you're going to go visit somebody else's pit. His first response was, hey, that's uh, Bristol, but then afterwards uh, certainly explained his position. Jerry Nadeau frustrated. Jimmy Spencer happy right now. He has the lead. 234 laps on the 11th caution. We'll be back. This has been a, a Visa race break as we continue live from Bristol Motor Speedway. We'll be right back. Welcome back to Bristol Motor Speedway on Fox. Mike Joy with Darrell Waltrip, Larry McReynolds, the Food City 500. 12 laps, make that 11 laps, yeah, 12 laps from halfway. Here's how the Coca-Cola Racing family is running today. We saw them running pretty well, actually. That first of Harvick and Burton and Bill Elliott are all in the top 10. Yep, down through Bobby Lab or down through uh, Bobby Labonte, all on the lead lap there, and uh, add Tony Stewart to that bunch. Matt's in his pit. Mike, the Gibbs guys are running 22nd and 24th. Under that caution, Tony Stewart switched over to the team radio, talking to his teammate Bobby Labonte. He apologized profusely for spinning him. Bobby responded by saying, "Hey, someday I'll be able to tell my grandkids that I got spun out by Tony Stewart." Tony responded, "I'm not sure that'll hold much water, Bob." The genie's the last one. Of cautions but the 29 car decided to stay put why well kevin harvick and todd barrier had a game plan a pit stop plan coming in and they're sticking to it no matter what happens out there on the track steve the genie dale earnhardt jr has been fighting what he terms a race car that's a little bit too snug he also told the team your driver's not doing a very good job of being patient but i'll keep trying dick Burton. <laughs> Jeff Burton has gone from 29th all the way up to 5th. The car runs hot on long yellow flags. It's fine under green. A little bit tight. Burton, very, very hungry. It's been 45 races since he's won as we're coming down to the green. Position 6 through 10, Jimmy Johnson 6th. Coming from uh, nearly being a lap down, Sterling Marlin 7th, Kenny Wallace 8th, Bill Elliott and Jamie McMurray who started in the back after that engine change they've done this to a little bit of strategy, a lot like Kevin Harvick has made his way up to the front by staying out on that racetrack. And 11, the driver who's dominated much of today, Jeff Gordon. Yeah, he just, you know, got caught back in there. He hadn't, early in the race, he hadn't been back in traffic. You won't hear much about him for a little while. They'll have to kind of filter through. He'll be very cautious. Jr. in that eight car, he's trying to get around Brett Bodine on the high side, but it just the car just don't stick that good up there as he's about to lose a position to Robbie. Oh, Terry Labonte! Oh, man. And Robbie Gordon, Brett Bodine, and the accordion squeezes together again. Kyle Petty, Kenny Schrader with damage. Oh, just say half the field. 
and they just keep stacking up back there. In fact, Terry Labonte going back up on the racetrack, Brett Bovine, they rode back together again right there. Don't think Terry's very happy. And he had a great run going, Daryl. Yep. Terry Labonte was in third place. Right yeah. side's first, fix the damage. being held. I don't think he, <laughs> Kenny was driving, coming around the outside like he was trying to get a lap back, but the yeah. pace car was already out on the racetrack. He must not have known that. Larry, look at Terry Labonte's pit and all that damage. Now, this is where your over-the-wall crew really earns their money if they're going to be able to keep him from losing another lap. First, let's uh, have a look at replays here. Watch the five car of Labonte toward the bottom of your screen. Gets tagged by Brett Bodine. There you see Robbie Gordon gets in the side of Brett Bodine on the left side, and they just start stacking up behind him. Kenny Wallace there at the bottom of the screen in the 23. Now Terry's trying to get away and move through here, and he gets bumped by Kenny Wallace. Brett Bodine slides back into him. about earlier, Daryl, it don't take much to send a car spinning around here. From Dale Jr. Misses it and gets through. into Terry or did Terry think maybe he had Brett cleared? I, I can't tell. As a driver on the lead lap, you expect a guy a lap or two down to show you some courtesy. That's what you expect. Of course, you get the unexpected a lot of times, too. Terry Labonte now is going to be back in about 28 spot, three laps down. In fact, he goes to the garage area. He went down pit road, made that left-hand turn into the garage area. Dick Bergeron? <laughs> Jeff Burton just keyed his radio mic. He's running in fourth spot. He said, I get the impression that if you're running up front, it's a lot more calm. And his crew chief, Paul Andrews, said, stay up front. Well, of all of our cars, I tell you, we're getting a lot of different pit agendas right now. Kevin Harvick in the 29, he's still staying out there. He's been out there over 100 laps, but Sterling Marlin decided in that 40 car to give up a top 10 running spot to come to pit road. People ask me, how'd you win seven races in a row there? Because I never was in the back. Every time I came here, I qualified up front, and I stayed up front. Six cars officially involved in this crash at turns one and two, putting us under the 12th caution of the day. At lap 243. Here's another look, folks, and you make the call as Terry Labonte tries to clear Brett Bodine. Well, actually, you know, Terry... Uh, Terry had him cleared off at turn four, and I just don't think that uh, he expected Brett to come back and, and drive in that hard once he got by him. And I think that's the difference, Daryl. Here you'll see again from Dale Jr. Watch the position of the yellow line, watch Brett's car, and watch Labonte coming around the outside here. Yeah, that, that happened pretty early on the straightaway, actually, but again, I think Terry was, was ahead of him and no idea that Brett would run in under him that hard. Uh, like I say, you got to respect the guys that are on the lead lap. Matt? Mike, you'll never know who the next deal could be with. And for Jeff Gordon, that's Rusty Wallace under the last caution. He told his spotter, Ron Deal, go down and talk to Rusty Wallace's spotter, Earl Barber. Tell him, let's hook up, let's make a deal, let's work our way to the front together. Earl responded back to Deal, 10-4, but we are on a little bit different by Gordon on Wallace, got Gordon the victory in April of 97, and then the last fall night race. 
what Gordon is asking for is, look, let me make some, let me try to make some passes. Don't fill that hole. Give me some room and follow me through. He doesn't want Re uh, Rusty to run up there in there, and fill the hole, and leave him hanging out. Well, Kevin Harvick in that 29, he stayed right with Jimmy Spencer in that seven car that time. They're trying to clear that lap car of Jeremy Mayfield. Jeff Burton gets kicked way up high down in turn one and two. We got Tony Stewart. I think what happened is he got hit. Jeff Burton got hit by the 31 car. Tony Stewart, I was all the way down on the apron in one and two. Took him a half a lap to get back up to speed, and that's about how much space he lost on the racetrack and all that. Mongo showing his tail to the field here. Jimmy Spencer, our leader. Kevin Harvick, Dale Jr. Let's have another look here. This is just as they took the green flag. Happens ahead of them. And everybody scatters from Robbie Gordon. He just, the uh, car wouldn't stay down. He pushed up the hill and got into the 99 and knocked him up the racetrack. Bucket didn't take him out. Steve Burns in our leader's pit. underneath me when I take the green flag. Put them back there to the field into the lead. Clean left. them all out and put them all at the back of the field. That'd make me happy. Good point. Good point. Because if you don't, they're going to be up there aggravating you again. Then we're going to be rubbing up here against your McMurray. Number. McMurray got into the back of Robbie Gordon. Then he got tagged by Ward Burton. Oh, no. Tony Stewart got into Ricky Rudd, and he's up in the fence. And somebody spun Bobby Labonte Bobby again. Labonte was spun again. I don't... Jamie McMurray had climbed well up in the field after that dead last start. He was in the top ten. I don't think Bobby Labonte hit anything. But he was blocked by Jamie McMurray over yeah, there. Yeah. He just barely got going before the leader came. Let's see it. No, I don't think he hit anything. I think he just slid up there and stopped. McMurray got in the, another one of those accordion deals. McMurray got in the back of Robbie Gordon. Ward Burton got in the back of McMurray. Chaos ensues. Bobby Gordon is, you know, kind of having a problem with his car. It's not handling all that well. He's two laps down. McMurray gets into the back of him, and here we go. And then McMurray looked like he checked up. That's when Ward Burton and the 22 got in the back of him, and the chain reaction continues. And here comes more. Yeah, watch Tony Stewart. Oh, nah, not good. That's what a hard hit. Up. Not good. Let's ride with McMurray. with Ricky Rudd. We've seen more shots of Ricky Rudd in Rex and, <laughs> and missing them. He gets down here and he sees the 42. He moves up. From what Tony Stewart's there. I don't think it hurt Ricky's car all that much. Dodge's another one. And under caution, coming to pit road. I think Tony thinks that he probably shouldn't have moved up over there. We used to call that the chrome horn, Daryl, but they're not chrome anymore. These boys need a little patience here. What's what's going on? Just Bristol. The Bristol stomp. <laughs> yeah. The, the kids in Bristol. There's a little anger management going on in the hood of Jamie McMurray's car. 13th caution of the day. There's that song we know so well. The kids in Bristol are sharp and physical when they do. Yeah. NASCAR on Fox is brought to you by Budweiser. The best things in life are the things that are true. Budweiser. The restart. Jimmy Spencer in front of Kevin Harvick, Dale Jr. Jimmy Johnson, his teammate Jeff Gordon, point leader Matt Kenseth, Jeff Burton, Rusty Wallace, Bill Elliott, and Johnny Benson, the top 10. And right now, Kevin Harvick in the 29, he's having to contend with that lap car of Jeremy Mayfield in the 19 car, as well as Ryan Newman up there, running beside Dale Earnhardt Jr. Remember, Ryan Newman is a lap down as well. 
23 cars on the lead lap just past halfway. Jerry Nadeau, Mark Martin, and Jack Sprague have all returned to the race after long, lengthy repairs. We still have Mike Skinner and Terry Labonte that are behind the wall trying to repair their car. Over halfway, only two cars out, Tony Raines and Derek Coe. Matt you know, on the move. We heard that the 24 talk to the two about let's work together. Well, the 24 went on, and the two must not gotten the message because he's falling back. Dale Jr. hung up on the outside, took a little slide there, hung on to it. 24 looks like he's kind of got himself in good position to work his way back up here and fight with Spencer a little bit. You ride with Kenny Wallace there, the 23. He is one lap down after being involved in a couple of the cautions today. You know, Darrell, one thing I did like about the concrete surface, it's not that weather sensitive. It don't change that much with weather, but the sun has come out. Dick Berger and those guys checking our track temperature down there. The track temperature of the concrete has went up just a little bit, about four or five degrees since this race started. The difference in asphalt and concrete. Asphalt, we put rubber into the track. It goes down into the asphalt. Here, we put rubber on top of the track. So when the sun comes out and heats the track up a little bit, it gets slicker. As Larry mentioned, only two cars out of the race, Tony Raines and Derek Cole. Neither one due to contact. Everybody else has made repairs and is back in the race, except Labonte and Skinner. And some of those cars don't have a lot of sheet metal left, but what the heck? Sheet metal doesn't hold up anything except the spoiler. Well, I mean, you do tear your car up here, get it all beat and beaten up, and it looks terrible, but you can go in there and beat it all back out and put it back together and get back out on the racetrack. That's why so many times there's a lot of cars left running here at the end of the day. Fourth and fifth place battle, Jeff Gordon, Matt Kenson. You generally don't knock the fuel pump off of them here. You just knock the fenders all in on them. Yeah, right. <laughs> Matt? Gordon being patient, that's why he's won here five times. He told Crew Chief Robbie Loomis the car is still a little bit free on entry, still a little bit tight in the center, but so far so good. Robbie Loomis told me they're still planning on pitting around their scheduled stop, lap 350. That way they can go the distance if they need to. Yeah, I mean, it's so funny this morning, Raymond Fox the third, Elliot Sadler's crew chief, he called me over this morning in the garage here and said, Larry, when do I need to pit? I said, well, the best advice I can give you from what I've seen here this week is when you get to about lap 375, get you four fresh tires and then pack your pit equipment up. That way you won't be tempted to come back. <laughs> Elliot's done a really good job. I mean, he's kind of been up and back. You know, he had to come and get that piece of metal out of the side of the car, but the car looks pretty darn good, and it's handling well. Of course, he's won here, so uh, I wouldn't count anybody out of this race yet. We still got the long way to go. Kevin Harvick in the 29 running here in second. We're riding with him. He finally gets by Jeremy Mayfield, but the thing, the story right now on him is just remember, he's been out there about 130 to 40 laps. A lot of those laps have been caution laps, but he's been out there for a while. See Jimmy Johnson in the 48 car. He's the third place trying to get by Ryan Newman in that 12 who's a lap down. And if I had Jeff Gordon, I'd give those guys a little bit of room because Ryan has just been very difficult to get around. Newman started on the pole, but brought a very loose race car into the race and made his first pit stop very early. And when he made that first pit stop early, put him back in the back, it's been downhill ever since. 48's got a run on him, but is he going to let him go or not? Yeah, he did. He moved up that time, gave him some room to race. Jeannie. that Todd has not brought. Once they got past about 125 laps, I'm a little surprised because at this time of the race, it, I think sometimes they settle down and you get those long green runs. And Darrell, you talked about it earlier. You make a green flag stop here. It's a minimum of three to four laps. Yeah, I'd say about four laps if you had to come down all the way around to this side of the racetrack. It would be disastrous. I mean, it's kept them up front. It's kept them clean. But again, if you have to pit under green, I won't say it's over with, but it's close to over with. Now, the one difference from what we've seen earlier, if I understand correctly, if you pit under green, you don't have to go all the way around. You can enter the pit lane on the side of the racetrack that your pit is on and not make that whole big U-turn loop. That is correct. That is correct. They treat it like two pit roads under green. Good point, Mike. But with the speed limit being only 30 miles an hour, that's going to seem like eternity. Well, that's two laps right there almost, right. just in, in going down pit road. Jimmy Spencer has led the last 64 laps here at Bristol. 
had a strong car yesterday. Wheel broke. And here's Matt Kenseth. Man, did you see what the kids did? He just run up there and just pushed Jeffy right out of the way, and Jeffy did not like that. Come on, get that, boy. Last year, Matt Kenseth scored the most points in the six short track races of any driver in Winston Cup. And what we consider our short track races is Bristol, Richmond, and Martinsville. Going down the back stretch off into turn three. I've always had the philosophy, if you live by the bump, you die by the bump. Boy, that looked exactly like what Jeff Gordon did to Rusty Wallace to win the race here back in August. and Jeff Gordon. Man, I gotta tell you, I am so 100% behind what they're doing, it's incredible. I wish they were here at Bristol, the most exciting race of the year, hanging out with us right now. And I know their adrenaline is rushing and they're wide open and they're so intent over there like we are here, but gosh, our hearts and souls go out with those cats. Rusty Wallace with a message to our servicemen abroad. Jimmy Spencer has now led the last about 80 laps. He led 54 laps here last March. This is the eighth time he has led a Winston Cup race at Bristol. Well, I tell you, though, the car I'm watching right now is Kevin Harvick, that 29 car. Jeannie Zalasco, you told me 290. It's 299. Where are they at? Yeah, I know, Larry Beck. You've heard of new math. A new math <laughs> calculating is all these caution laps that's been in there while they've been out there. As I said, we always use the formula roughly three caution laps to one green lap. It's really hard to calculate accurately gas mileage on a short track like this because you don't really know how much the throttle the driver's using. If I was in their boat, I'd run it till it go, runs out of fuel. You made your bed, baby. You're going to have to lay in it. How about Steve Burns in the leader's pit? Well, Mike, you mentioned how many laps That's a, that's a pretty good march. He's come from 37. How about Greg Biffle, our Bush Series champion? He and Kyle Petty battling for 14th spot. Yeah, and Kyle's had kind of an eventful day. He's been in a couple of wrecks, but uh, Biffle's been quiet. Hadn't heard anything out of him. He's just been uh, kind of doing a yeoman's job today. That last pit, uh, last caution, Darrell, Biffle came in and made repeated stops under that caution to adjust on that car, got back out and running well. And he has those four fresh tires. And I think definitely now, Darrell, this racetrack, you talked about it getting greasier and slicker. I think, you know, fresh tires mean a little more now maybe than did it at the beginning of the race. Plus, I, I, listen, you get tired here. You really get tired of hanging on to that thing lap after lap. We talk about just going around and around in circles. Your arms get a little tired. Your neck gets a little bit of get tired. You can lose your focus here. So if your car's not handling really well, you can get in trouble just all by yourself. Jimmy Spencer getting past Robbie Gordon. The inside, inside. Let's get out to our Ford crash-away car. It's our Ford cutaway car, but here at Bristol, Jeff Hammond, I think maybe it's got a little different meaning. Well, I got news for you, Mike. Right now, my car is in pretty good shape compared to some of the cars that are running around the racetrack. And one of the reasons some of these guys were able to go back out is because they came with the big engine three-quarter front bumpers on these cars. You've got to keep the radiators in there. And you can see some of the debris I've already picked up. This is a piece of the tubing off of the 41 car, Casey Mears. He had a lot of damage. He got it back out there. But if he had this in the front of it, he may have gotten back out a little bit sooner. Also, while I was in the garage area, I had an opportunity to walk down and take a look at Harry Labonte's car. 
got to go back out there and one of these things that's been the front ends knocked off of it and the sides are caved in on it. You get a lot of extra heat, you get debris. Uh, it's really a miserable ride and you got to sit out there and grind it out. Fifth place changed hands. Kurt Busch has moved past Jeff Gordon. His teammate Mark Martin involved in an earlier crash and laps down. And also second place changed hands. Matt Kenseth got underneath Kevin Harvick to change second spot. But I'm going to tell you, Darrell, as I watched that 97 car, remember in the early part of the race, he could not keep it on the bottom of the racetrack. We even heard the radio communication, how loose he was. I think a couple things has happened. A, their changes have made that car better, but I think this racetrack is probably starting to tighten up a little bit with a lot of rubber down. Yeah, I mean, you, you get that rubber down there, that thing won't, it won't stick that right front like it did earlier and cause it to, to roll over like he was complaining about. It's going to slide a little bit more, and that little soft spring in there might feel pretty good about now. After 13 caution flags by roughly the halfway point, this race has taken on a green flag look. 317 complete, 183 to go, and pit stops coming shortly. Especially for Kevin Harvick, a lot earlier than a lot of them, than in 29 car. Harvick has slipped to third, three seconds off the lead. Whoa, Ricky Craven just drove in on the back of Robbie Gordon at 31 and 3 and 4, and he That's, did everything but hit no, a wall. That was a payback. <laughs> the 29 did that to him going into turn one. Ricky drove down there, and he still got through with him, I don't think. Ricky drove down there and took a shot at the 29. 29 says, all right, I, get, I got your message. I got the message. And that's right in front of Kevin Harvick. Kevin Harvick, he don't want to see his teammates spin out, but he could sure use that caution right now. If they don't get, a, if they don't get separated, you're going to see one pretty quick. <laughs> Now Kevin Harvick is about four and a half seconds behind leader Jimmy Spencer. And, and Larry, listen to it. He, he's in a throttle wide open for just such a short period of time. Look to him. Lays out. Easy. 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 Right there. He only had it wide open just for one instant. Spinning the rear tires. And I, that's all the things that Todd Berry, his crew chief, has to try to figure into this gas mileage equation. How much is he wide open throttle? Well, and also he's got, he's out of fuel, so the back of the car is pretty light right now. Now that whole incident happened trying to avoid an even slower car. Ricky Craven was coming up on, I believe, John Andretti. And eases up. Robbie Gordon just gets into him a little bit. Uh, and again, just about, that, that's about sending him sailing right there. Yep. That's, that's what angers a driver when you hit me like that. That's not a good place. So here comes Ricky, and he says, all right, buddy. Two can play this game. Bam. So he tries to take him. He takes a big swing at him down here, but he ducked it. Well, look who Jimmy Spencer's trying to put a lap on. Winston Cup champ Tony yeah. Stewart. He's got damage from that earlier wreck. He got up into the wall over there hard, and they tried to come back to pit road and work on it, but but they couldn't. Harvick will be the first of the leaders to make what he hopes will be his final pit stop. Jeannie? Well, Todd Barrier got off his seat. He was spinning on his feet. You can tell he's a little frustrated. They were almost pulling for something to happen. A couple laps back, Ricky Craven. The last time Kevin Harvick came through, he said the car was just a since it's a green flag stop, he can go back out on the racetrack in turn three. He don't have to come down the pit road on the front stretch. And, and that's really bad luck, Mike, because I can't remember the last time I've seen a, leader, a lead car have to make a green flag pit stop. And it appears he's going to be a little over about two and a half laps down. Wow. Now, it might be like wishing for it to snow right now, but what he <laughs> needs is for no cautions about the next hundred laps. Yeah, it's going to take, take some real luck. With the first five weeks of the season we had, don't you dare wish for snow. <laughs> You don't need a caution, though. No. <laughs> NASCAR Winston Cup Racing on Fox is brought to you by Napa Auto Parts. Napa, we keep America running. By Visa, proud sponsor of NASCAR. By McDonald's. And by Lowe's Home Improvement Warehouse. Lowe's, improving home improvement. 
by yeah. Bristol Motor Speedway, Matt Kenseth. It's a big run on Jimmy Spencer, and the lead changes hands. Now, for more action, like you've seen today, tune in tonight to the Lucas Oil 250 from Mesa Marine Raceway, the Craftsman Truck Series, 5 p.m. Eastern Time on Speed Channel. If you don't yet get speed, call toll-free 1-888-22-SPEED. My, my, my intensity meter is picking up a lot right now. These leaders are trying to get through these cars. Tony Stewart just went a lap down. Uh, got Harvick here on pressured tires trying to get up there to get back, at least on one of those laps back if he can. He's real close to doing that, Darrell. Now, what we have to document is our leader, Matt Kenseth, he was on pit road at lap 199. We're at 343, so he's about maybe 30 laps away from having to make a pit stop. Jimmy Spencer back in second, he was on pit road at lap 182. He's within about 20 laps. As he's fixing to lose another position to Kurt Busch, I'm going to tell you what, that 97 car, the further we go in the race, the better he gets. Same thing he did here before, how he won the race. And Kurt Busch was on pit road the same time as his teammate, Matt Kenseth. So Kevin Harvick, Steve, he needs for about 30 or 40 laps to go by, at least without a caution. 17 pulled down, left to 29 up on the outside, letting him go. eight the ninth changing hands and as we uh, approach about 150 laps to go what we need to document all these cars pitting now they can go the distance as we see a pass right there for fifth place bobby labani he's been spun out twice and here he is back in the top five in the 18 car it's that purple car brought him some good luck here was it the purple car or the purple uniform what were they calling him barney barney labani <laughs> Jeremy Mayfield had a great description of this place. He said it's like spending three hours in a clothes dryer, and by the time you're done, somebody's lost a sock or two. And I want to tell you, Bobby Labonte, what we, I think one reason he's so good, Daryl, he may be a victim of his own problems, is the fact that he was on pit road at lap 257, so he has a lot fresher tires than most of these guys. Yeah, that's it. Uh... That's going to turn out to be a big plus for him. Sometime your bad luck turns out to be good. Well, what's the big plus is the fact we know he can go much further than all these cars that we've talked about that's going to have to pit here shortly. Matt Kenseth from 37th to the lead. Jeff Burton from 29th. Ricky Rudd from 32nd. Boy, Bobby Labonte, he's, he's coming in a hurry. He is. Uh, the tire factor, is the, that's the whole thing right now. He's got to, when those tires go off on these cars, it's like you flip a switch. That sucker won't get forward, bite it, won't turn. All it wants to do is slide around, slip, slide away. He pulls in on Jeff Gordon, the fourth place car, the 24 car. Jeff Gordon, like Kurt Busch and Matt Kenseth, he was on pit road at 199. And physically, these long green flag runs here, they wear the driver slap out. I mean, you're running around a half-mile racetrack right now. The race pace is in the mid-16s. Yeah, and you're used to getting a caution every now and then, catching your breath, getting something to drink, coming to the pit road. Not happening right now. I'm, I'm looking down at Jimmy Spencer's pit, and those guys, they're climbing up on pit wall. It could be pretty quick that Jimmy Spencer has to come to pit road. Yeah, I think it will be, Larry, because he keeps going back. Uh, he's losing spots. Gordon just went around him. Here's Bobby Labonte all over the back of him. You see Gordon make the pass on him. Here's Bobby Labonte. I think Jimmy's used his stuff up. Both Spencer and Matt Kenseth are pitted on look, the backside. Look how much he's dropped off in lap speed. And I mean, a, a little while ago, not too many laps ago, he was sitting there leading the race comfortably. Mongo needs a bone. Which would be four fresh tires. Four bones. Tony Stewart, you just saw him go by Tony Stewart, the 20 car. His car is definitely not driving very good since he hit the ball over there going into three. Oh, boy. Teammates almost got together there. Bush and Kenseth. And that's a battle for the lead right there, Kurt yep. Bush in the 97 car. Here comes uh, Spencer to pit road, y'all. He's coming on off of four right now. It'll be four tires for sure. Fill that thing up with fuel. They're going to have to back him up. He went across the front line, Steve. That's going to cost him a lot of time. Yeah, that's right. I've been, 
and you've been out there running that much. Let's go to Jeannie in the 48 pit. And the 48, the plane gave her a little bit loose off. He just about spun out getting up to speed. Yeah, and your own sticker tires, and boy, it takes a lap or two to get those stickers knocked off. But Larry, when you've been out there running all these green flag laps, when you come to pit road, I've had cramps in my legs and didn't know it. When I started to push the clutch in, get on the brake, my leg had a cramp in it, and I'd slide through my pit box. Now, Kurt Busch has taken the lead for Matt Kenseth, as you saw. Jeff Gordon, Bobby Labonte, Jeff Burton, the top five, then Rusty Wallace, Dale Earnhardt Jr., and Greg Biffle. And it appears these guys, most of the leaders is having to pit under green as Bill Elliott, the nine car, comes to pit road on the back stretch pit. If you have a decent pit stop, you're losing about two and a half to two and three quarter laps. And you're just hoping, hoping that they don't, everybody has to pit under green. That's all, that's all you can hope for. Because this thing will be turned upside down if we have a caution here anytime soon. Bush trying to knock Johnny Benson off the lead lap. I meant figuratively, not knock him literally. <laughs> okay, maybe both. <laughs> we are at Bristol. <laughs> That's right. Larry and Darrell, we talk about the tires and guys who pitted, guys who have it. Jimmy Spencer, since coming in, is picking up almost anywhere from a half a second to three quarters of a second a lap on the leaders right now. So these guys are going to start thinking about getting to pit road and getting some tires. All right, Bill Elliott, Mike Ford, they just made a huge they mistake. Did. They, they did. They did pit road like they would under caution. He went in on the backstretch oh, pit, right. yep. and he treated it like one pit road. It's not having a good interpretation of the rules him a lot of time. We'll see where he ends up once he gets up to speed. It's going to be a lot more than two and a half laps. It's actually over three laps, Mike. Three laps down. Now, Sterling Marlin and Ricky Rudd take advantage of Dale Earnhardt Jr. That's seventh and eighth place going by. And they went over that twice in the driver's meeting about yep. that. Dale Earnhardt Jr., he's in trouble. He may have. He's, he's out, out of gas. We're getting a report. He is out of fuel. He'll make it to pit road. He was not even sure he could pit there, Steve. Yeah, he's going to get two rounds of wedge, Larry, back. Tires going on the right side. Jay Garnieri, Phil Dry, the tire changers. Made a wedge adjustment. Left side tires going on for Dale Earnhardt Jr. And he finally refires the engine. And it stalls again. Jeff Gordon coming in. Larry, let me tell you, the problem here yep. is... Jeff Gordon, excuse me, Darrell, almost made the same mistake. He pulled off at turn two to go to pit road, and they said, no, no, come on around. That's what I was just getting ready to say. We have not made any green flag stops here in so long. Nobody's ever had to do this. Matt Yoke. And that's exactly what happened. The guys were jumping up and down. A costly mistake by Gordon. Jimmy Johnson, his teammate, and the car that... you've trained I don't care how good a shape you're in this place it knocks you down it wears you out and you're just hanging on to that race car by the end of this race particularly with these green flag runs like this and I'm gonna tell you what this has done this has took some guys that pitted under some cautions later on in the run while ago it's put them up in the top five because when Kurt Busch comes to pit road which will be shortly Bobby Labonte Sterling Marlin Ricky Rudd and Greg Biffle who's running second through fifth those guys can go quite a bit further I'm glad we have transponders and uh, computerized scoring because it'd be hard to keep up with who, where everybody is if we didn't I wouldn't have no part of it <laughs> 
376 laps complete in Bristol. Welcome back to Bristol where Bobby Labonte has put the purple car into the lead. Here's how it happened as he tracked Kurt Busch. Remember, Bobby's on much fresher tires than Kurt Busch. We anticipate Kurt Busch will be to pit road pretty quick. And then we almost had a caution while we were away. Caution is out now, though not for this, but it is out. Kenny Schrader pounded the wall. And the caution is now out. Schrader's taking his car behind the wall, and there is the caution flag, Dale Jarrett. Jimmy Spencer's trying to get a lap back. He will not get it back. Bobby Labonte was smart enough not to let Jimmy Spencer have a lap back at this place. He did make that mistake at Atlanta, and he got lectured pretty hard by his crew chief and a lot of other people. I don't think he's going to do that today. But this is the break Bobby Labonte, Kurt Busch, Sterling Marlin, Ricky Rudd, and Greg Biffle was looking for. Dale Jarrett. Is everything because the five drivers at the top of the board have not yet made green flag pit stops they're on a lap of their own haven't seen that in a long time 14 caution flags 109 laps to go hey you, you know matt kenseth kurt bush's teammate was on pit road not that long ago so you have to believe possibly let's listen to some audio from kurt bush taped under green. Yeah, are you sure about all that? Sure I yeah. am because I know a caution's coming. Dig it. Stay focused, man. Let's get all the cars we can on that now. Maybe a caution come out. Let's go. That's just what they did, and they did get the caution. I want to see one. I don't want to be one, right? Well, this is going to get real exciting now. Uh, when these fast cars are lap down, drive up underneath the uh, leader for the restart. Because, Darrell, what we'll see, most of these cars are lapped down, I'm sure, like Kevin Harvick, Matt Kenseth. Pit Road is still closed right now, but a lot of those cars, they will stay out. They will be at the tail end of the lead lap with the hopes, as we always say, cautions will breed another caution soon. I'd almost bet on it. New to Winston Cup this season, the McDonald's drive through Challenge, powered by Powerade. The eligible crew, with the shortest cumulative time on pit road each week, wins 20 grand. The season-long winner, $200,000 among the participating teams. $200,000. Wow. DW, you didn't hardly make that much when you won those championships, did you? I didn't win that much. No, you're right. <laughs> the last one I won in uh, 85 was 250. Wow. Good money for these guys on pit road, but we know these races can be won or lost on pit road. Some of these guys would have probably given about that much not to have seen that caution. Then. Right. Well, that took Kevin Harvick off the lead lap. Matt Kenseth among the contenders. Jimmy Johnson, Jimmy Spencer, Jeff Gordon, Jeff Burton, Rusty Wallace. All find themselves trapped, laps down because of the caution flag coming out in the middle of a green flag pit stop sequence where five drivers, Bobby Labonte, Kurt Busch, Sterling Marlin, Ricky Rudd, and Greg Biffle had not pitted, nor had Kyle Petty, Ward Burton, and Tony Stewart, who find themselves one lap down. They would have lost another lap or two had they pitted. And they will have to pit now because, yep. as you say, they have not been to pit road. Everybody that pits now, just like a lot of the guys that pitted on the green, they'll be able to go the distance now with 107 laps to go. So it's a whole new ball game at Bristol, which is a little more than 100 laps to go. This is NASCAR on Fox. NASCAR on Fox is brought to you by UPS, official delivery company of NASCAR. We want to race the truck. People love the truck. UPS delivers a chance to win four tickets to the Daytona 500. Log on to foxsports.com, keyword UPS Racing. UPS, official delivery company of NASCAR. That's not our Pepsi fan cam as they work on Dale Jarrett's car. Here it is. Rocky County, Tennessee. We said I was on a Rocky road town. down in the Tennessee hills. Ain't no smoggy smoke on Rocky Town. Ain't no telephone bill. Once I had a girl on Rocky Town. Half a bear, the other half cat. Wild as a big but sweet ass soda pop. I still dream about that. Rocky Town. 
Rocky time. The pits are open, oh, and you know what? I have to believe Kurt Busch is pretty happy they're open, Dick Bergen. Kurt Busch couldn't be happier, Larry McReynolds. The reason is that the fuel pressure gauge on that car was fluctuating. They were going to really try to come in within a lap or two of when that caution flag came out. So this is a huge break for Busch. Not only does he not run out of gas, he gets to pit under caution when so many of the other contenders wound up pitting under green. The car is so good, the only changes they're going to make are tire pressure, and that is in quarter-pound increments. Kurt Busch, winner of this event last year, has a terrific race car crew now in the process of changing the left side tires he's out of here he'll go to the green checker that and leader bobby labani makes his way to his pit stall a big attaboy to crew chief michael fatback mcswain they were going to pit two laps before this caution fatback saw smoke down in one and two and waved him off no changes on the at car a 12.85 second stop on their last stop a little bit slow than run by mark hollywood armstrong but a good stop Six seconds to Steve Burns. Matt, also a huge break for Ricky Rudd, making his 51st start here. He's never won. No adjustments to that number 21 car. Tim Sheets and Mike Smith change the tires. 15.7 seconds to Jeannie. One pound in the right rear, one round of wedge in for Kyle Petty. And Kyle saying, don't do anything to mess me up in the corners. By the way, he's having radio trouble. Kyle saying he can't hear his spotter consistently. Not good. Sixth place for Kyle Petty. Patty up on the pit box as Kyle's car, bent but unbroken, heads back out. Ricky Rudd, 50 starts at Bristol, Kyle 39, still hoping. But I couldn't believe when I looked at the stats, Ricky Rudd had never won here. I thought, I thought surely in 50 starts, I, I thought I remembered him winning a race here. The other one that really surprised me was that the Wood Brothers had won here only once with Elliot Sadler two years ago. We're under caution at Bristol. Green flag for the restart. Kurt, or rather, on the tail end of the lead lap, Matt Kenseth. Bobby Labonte is the race leader. Number Not for long, Mike. The 97 just blew right by him. And up ahead, drivers trying to get laps back. If Jeff Gordon is actually two laps down, he can get a caution here. He'd only be one lap down. One of the lead lap cars is in trouble. Greg Biffle was overheating under the oh, caution flag. And Kyle, Kyle Petty. Petty gets into Nema check. And Caution, everybody caution is out. Caution is out. Now, this will be a break for Jeff Gordon, Matt Kenseth, and Dale Earnhardt Jr. Who's going to get a lap back and who's not? Kirk Busch digging hard to keep anybody else from getting by. Bill Elliott, the nine's trying to get up there, but those three cars will get a lap back. Bill Elliott, Ryan Newman will not. 15th Ryan, caution flag. Ryan Newman's four laps down, so it wouldn't have helped him a little bit, I guess. He is a, another car had to pit under green a while ago. Kyle Petty was down on the apron, washed up into Joe Nemechek, you'll see here. Yeah, he just, God, he ran out. He had nowhere to go, but he had such a run on Joe that he couldn't woe up, so he tried to go on the apron, hoping Joe might see him and move up. Didn't happen. Boy, Joe Nemechek was lucky. He was able to save that car. Yeah. Kyle could have, you know, he had two options there. Try to get down on the apron or run into Joe. He got down on the apron and still run into Joe, but at least Joe kept going. And Kyle, very lucky that nobody tagged him coming past. Kyle's been lucky all day. He's been in a couple of... Ooh, Harvick squeezes past. Johnny Benson. Right, left, right, left, right. That was right. Now that'll put uh, Matt Kenseth back on the lead lap, so we now have six cars on the lead lap. Puts Jeff Gordon one lap down. Dell Earnhardt Jr., after running out of gas under green, puts him now two laps down. In Jeff. fact, Matt Kenseth and Dell Earnhardt Jr. are both on pit road. Yeah, and the problem is that these guys one lap down a guy, there's a lot of cars in the same boat. Jeff Gordon, Rusty Wallace, those guys are going to be behind a lot of cars that are a lap down. But Daryl, to me, it was kind of a no-brainer for Matt Kenseth, Robbie Riser. You know, you're the last car on the lead lap, six cars on the lead lap. Get those fresh tires. Get advantage of them. Well, that's taking a lot for granted. That's just assuming everybody's going to let you get back up there where you were. you got to do it in a hurry. Now, what is the rule when you line up for the restart among cars that are one or two or more laps down on the inside? Do you need to give way? 
to somebody who's less laps down than you are. The, the rule, it's a gentleman's agreement. It's another one of those situations where if you're two laps down, the other guy's one lap down, you you would, courtesy, courtesy would say, let the guy go. But it doesn't necessarily have to happen. Speaking of right, left, Chris Myers, Jeff Hammond. Yeah, or uh, right, wrong. Uh, Kurt Busch uh, try, uh, trying to win uh, for the second straight year. Bobby Labonte has never won here. His only short track victory, Martinsville, last year. And they look like the two to look for. But there are some other guys with fast cars that could make moves. Oh, yeah, exactly right. We've already seen right now where Matt Kenseth has got his lap back. But there's several other guys I think are going to be in the same situation. When these lap cars come up the inside, it's going to be just like Bristol was supposed to be. Everybody's going to be trading paint. Don't be surprised in the next 100 laps, like the first 100 laps, we don't have about five more cautions for the end of this race. Racing the way it ought to be, we've already had 15 cautions. Some of those cars would be uh, guys like uh, Jeff Gordon, Jimmy right. Spencer, right? Well, Jimmy Spencer definitely got to get some laps back, and uh, along with Jeff Gordon. But these guys are so fast, they've got to get up on the wheel now. But at the same time, Bobby Labonte, as well as Kirk Busch, have got to be smart enough not to race too soon and wind up getting caught up in somebody else's mess. Well, let's check in with uh, Dick Berger, and he's with Robbie Reiser. Dick? Well, right now, Robbie's talking to his driver, Matt Kenseth. We'll see if we can get to him. Robbie, why'd you pit? Why'd you pit? What's that? Why did you pit? Well, we're the last guy in the lead lap, so uh, we didn't have, you know, what's the you know, what's the difference? We got a pit here because we're the last car. We ain't gonna lose no spot, so we just put four tires on and go here. That's the strategy from Matt Kenseth's pit. Oh, he's got to hurry, though, Dick, if he's going to make it around all these cars on the outside and get into his spot, which he has to do before turn three. Yeah, one of the By things that uh, these guys got to deal with now is Kurt Busch has nothing in front of him, and he is fast. So in trying to get a lap back now uh, is going to be pretty difficult to do because Kurt's going to have clear sailing, and I don't think you're going to catch him. He just, he made it. It's in the middle of three and four. Kevin Harvick let him slide in, pace cars Ready. off. We're going racing. Nine Ready. laps to go. He slides up in front of Bobby Labonte. Remember, he's trying to get his lap back. I think you'll see Kurt Busch, you know, as good as his car is, it'll be hard to get a lap back from him. Well, actually, Bill Elliott's trying to get three laps back. Because he pitted under green, remember, and misread the rules. Used both pit roads under green. I think there's no question we'll have another caution or two, but again, like I said, uh, Kurt's going to have to be mighty generous to let people get back on the lead lap. Boy, and, and hats off to the cat. Jack Roush. A lot of engine troubles of late, but right now, Roush-powered cars have four of the top six positions. Well, just watching this battle right here, Matt Kenseth in the 17, Kevin Harvick in the 29, and just in front of this group is Greg Biffle, and a while ago, I couldn't help but note that Biffle and Harvick was beating on each other like it was the last lap. And then, Harvick let Biffle in when it was time to restart. You're talking about Jack Roush and the power his engines are producing and where they are as far as the track's concerned right now. Spoke to Jack earlier today, and he told me, he said, Jeff, a lot of people have said, what's going on with your engine program? But you need to understand something. We're trying to make more power. The more times I try to pick the power bands up, the more problems I'm not running into. But I'm not going to be scared to keep pushing that limit. I will find out what's wrong with these engines. I will fix it as we go along. And before the year's done, he said, I will make more power, turn our cars with more RPM, and I'm not going to be afraid to sometimes break to learn how I have to work on these things to make them better. Well, a lot of horsepower here is, is hard to handle. Uh, you put that real low gear in there and you got 800 horsepower. That's where all that wheel spin comes from. So a soft engine here is actually a little easier to drive. I bet you Matt Kenthus had a little bit of wheel spin just a second ago because Kevin Harvick had the rear wheel jacked up off the ground. <laughs> Riding with Kevin Harvick right here. Kevin is a lap down. He's the first car that's a lap down in seven. Darrell, you talk about this track physically, but how about mentally? When you go in turn one, the sun is right in your face. As you go in the back stretch, it's, it's very, very deep shade, and then right back into bright sun again. Those are all things that irritate you as a driver. You're tired. You've been out there for a long time. No green flag, nothing to drink. Uh, I'm telling you, it takes its toll. Kevin Harvick is watching the battle between teammates right there. The 17, Matt Kenseth, Greg Biffle. That was a battle for fifth. 
He just got into the back of Greg Biffle as well. You just watch when this race is over with how many of these guys they got to drag out of these cars. Because this is the first really tough physical race we've had this year. And it's pretty warm out there right now. That's the reason you own a box of Wheaties, because these drivers are athletes. Oh, so yes, they own a box of Wheaties, you have to be an athlete. Like I've always said, go out there and put a helmet and a jacket on, ride around your cul-de-sac for three and a half hours with a heater on, see how you feel. <laughs> and put 40 other cars in that same cul-de-sac. NASCAR wins the Cup racing on Fox. He is brought to you by Chevrolet. Wherever there's a winner's circle, we'll be there. Welcome back to the Food City 500. Under caution with 75 laps to go. Let's show you what happened down the front straightaway. Robbie Gordon and Ward Burton got into it. Those cars are already damaged from uh, being in accidents earlier. Ward was only one lap down. Difficult to drive. They get together there and Ward loses control. He's headed for the inside wall here and then he's hits the inside wall and the momentum just carries him right back up and there goes Kyle, who I'm sure was hustling trying to get clear of that. So those two cars just get together and just, it's the loosest part of the racetrack. It's a hard lick on the inside then, wall. Man, I'm sure Kyle was all drawn up knowing that here comes Ward. Am I gonna make it? Am I gonna make it? Ah. Watch this lick right here though, Kyle Petty on that outside wall. That's a hard lick. Yeah. Now, I wanna give a call to our cameraman. When you have accidents that start out with one hit, you follow the first crash, then the next crash, then the next crash. Those fellows are carrying the bills for them. It's all happening in a hurry. Yep. And they're all multiple incidents. today where I think these drivers, spotters, everybody figures the car is going to go down the racetrack, but it's going up, and a lot of people's getting in trouble by trying to go around them on the high side. Of 16 cautions in all the crashes so far, the only cars that are not back in the race are Dale Jarrett and Kenny Schrader. Though it is unlikely that Kyle Petty or Ford Burton will return in the 72 laps that remain. NASCAR on Fox is brought to you by Stacker 2, the world's strongest fat burner. By the Home Depot, NASCAR's home improvement warehouse. And by Valvoline's Max Life, products formulated to help keep your higher mileage car running for a long, long time. 70 laps to go. After tagging Ward Burton and slamming the wall with the left front, Kyle Petty taking a long time to get out of his Dodge. But now, uh, with little aid from the rescue workers, he's able to climb out, puts weight on that left leg, and climbs that easily with the right. So, hopefully Kyle is okay. I know it's uh, it, it, it usually knocks the wind out of you when you hit the wall that hard, and, and probably, probably broke some ribs. Here's another look, Darrell, as Ward slides up. And yeah. I mean, and, and Kyle, was, he sees what's happening. He's trying to drive down in there probably just like he's racing. He's trying to get away from this thing so he didn't get involved in it. And man, that, when he hits that left front up there, uh, that's, that's when the, the driver really feels it. Let's also mention that earlier, Jason Fowler, the tire carrier for Robbie Gordon, lacerated his finger. It was a deep cut, and so they took him uh, to the local hospital to make sure there was no nerve damage. Here's Jeff Hammond. Guys, we're talking about Kyle Petty inside his race car. Look here, I want to show you how tight everything is down inside here. These are the head restraint areas as far as you got a helmet on, it's to keep your head from being moved around very much. But the other thing that's kind of interesting is look how tight everything is in here. The roll bar right here above my head. They also got a bar right here as far as the door bar is concerned. Bobby, stand up here and take a look and shook down inside. I'm going to take the steering wheel off, and still I want you to see how tight it is down inside as far as where my legs are at. 
This is what Kyle is probably right now protecting his legs. They got leg supports on either side. But you've got very little room to move around inside this race car. So when you try to get out of the window opening itself, it's very small. I have no door top right here, and yet you can see how much room I would have trying to crawl out with all that head and neck restraint and everything like that right here. He uses a carbon fiber seat, which is kind of like new state tech, uh, new, new style technology, but this window opening is one of those things. Think about Kyle. He's almost twice as big as I am. Big old tall guy, and it's real, real hard to get in and out of. You imagine the fact that he's probably had the wind knocked out of him. It's very difficult to pull yourself up out of here, and as Daryl's been talking about all day long, physically he's wore down. Now he just had the wind knocked out of him, so getting out of this race car is going to be very, very difficult. If you just take one more look here, guys, I'm trying to take a turn and get out. This is how tight everything can be, but that's the idea of having a really tight area for a driver to sit in to try to protect yourself. Also, Jeff, it took some time for Kyle to remove his helmet and remove the Hans device, the head and neck support, had both of those off uh, when he finally did climb out of the car. And he's a, he's a tall, lanky fellow, a lot like his dad, Richard Petty. I need to document, since that wreck, Kyle was sitting over there at the entrance of Pitt Road. Pitt Road has been closed this entire time. I have a sneaky feeling. I don't think we'll see the guys at the very front, like Kurt Busch, Bobby Labonte, those guys. But we may see people like Greg Biffle, Sterling Marlin, possibly Pitt. Now, we saw Kyle Petty walk over uh, to the gurney. That's his wife, Patty, walking into the care center with him. The uh, neck support there as a precaution. They're going to check him over, and as soon as we have a report, we'll pass it on to you. Pit Road is open. Sterling Marlin, Greg Biffle running on the lead lap. They are on Pit Road for their final stop. You see the shaded back straight away as the sun moves across Bristol. And the sun is a welcome sight after the spring we've had in Winston Cup racing. Released from the care center, Ward Burton, Kyle Petty being checked over. We hope to have an update. Dale Jarrett back in the race with his battered car. And let's pick up a little audio between Jimmy Fennig and Kurt Busch. You know, uh, Kurt, tire wear looks awesome. Uh, you're not even aware of these bricks. 10 4, just uh, the air build. What does the air build look like? We've been building towards the tide. 10 4, these yellows will just ride this thing out the way we need it to. And what Jimmy Finning's telling Kurt Bush is, you know, we're staying on the agenda. We're not coming to pit road leading this race. And he's looking at the air pressure buildup. It must be building more in the right front of the left rear, showing the car's pushing, Dick Bergeron. Well, just before you heard that transmission, the transmission was that the car is free everywhere, so build it toward tight. That's exactly what they want. They're saying that the car is reacting well to changes. They like it so much, they're going to take it to Dover. As Kurt Busch, the leader, heads to the green flag. Man, that's optimistic. Yeah. We still got 75 laps to go here, 70 laps to go, and uh, they're thinking about taking that car to Dover. I didn't want to get it out of here first. Well, Bill Russell Elliott. Wallace in that two car, he went to the inside the minute they crossed the start-finish line, picked him up a couple of positions. Up there trying to get his lap back. Well, there's a bunch of guys, you know, that are really going to be pressing the issue right now. Trying to get back on that lead lap. I mean, that can make all the difference in the world. It's go or go home time at Bristol. Actually, Rusty Wallace is trying to get one of two laps back. And those cars got two laps down by making pit stops under green. And a caution flag came out before that round of pit stops was completed. Right now, our top three cars. The way they're running, Kurt Busch in the 97, Bobby Bonnie in 18, Ricky Rudd in the 21, they are first, second, and third. The fourth car, Jimmy Spencer, is two laps down. One of those cars made that green flag stop. The fourth place car in the race is Matt Kenseth, along with Greg Biffle and Sterling Marlin, who just pitted. Those are the cars on the lead lap. Steve? Mike, just before the caution for Kyle Petty's wreck, Ricky Rudd was telling Kurt Day, but 
with Ricky Ruddis and a leprechaun on board all day long. We have seen him dodge countless wrecks in front of him. Yeah, Tony Stewart went right up over the top of him or over on the back straightaway earlier today, but uh, looks like the car's in pretty good shape right now. And you know, it has a little bit of damage, Darrell, but you know, they're running fast here, but if there's a place that, that arrow does not mean that much, it would be here at Bristol, especially I'll take, when you're in race trim. I'll take a car with a little bit of damage right now. <laughs> Now Spencer, who is trying to get a lap back, and Wallace going after Rudd. Rudd has 50 Bristol starts, 10 finishes of second or third. Still looking for his first win here. And Kevin Harvick in the 29, he just wants one back. That's all he needs to get back on the lead lap. Yeah, he was lucky. He got one back there just Workout before that caution came out. He got everybody in trouble. Matt Kenseth in the 17, right behind him, he's going to pass Ricky Rudd for third place. Rudd cannot keep his car down right now. Jimmy Johnson, a lap, one lap down, goes past Rudd. Jimmy Johnson in eight. Six cars on the lead lap. Seven more, one lap down. Followed by about six more, two laps down. Boy, Matt Kenson, <laughs> he just gave, he gave Kevin Harvick a little shot down in turn one just a second ago. It worked. Man, I'm on the lead lap. It worked. Let me out of here. Genie is with Ward Burton. in front of them. Yeah, and, and listen to Ward, it's just kind of the cinema of this whole crowd today. Yeah, we're racing here today, but we're thinking about you guys over there fighting for our country. Bush, Labonte, and then Kenseth, 3.3 seconds off the lead. 50 laps to go. This is where patience starts losing some letters. It's all over now. If you got anything, you better use it. Now, Ricky Rudd sliding back just a little bit. He's now 4.7 seconds away from leader Kurt Busch. And Greg Biffle is going to be right in his mirror. And what we have to remember, Greg Biffle has a lot fresher tires than Ricky Rudd because Greg Biffle pitted just the last time the caution was out. And here comes Biffle, who was overheating uh, two caution flags ago. Here you see Dale Jarrett. He's back out there again in that 88 UPS car just trying to make laps. Right now, he's 102 laps down, and it's hard to get out of the way. Last car on the lead lap, Sterling Marlin. Seven seconds off the lead. He's got new tires as well. You know, and the guy that's really done, had a, a really good day is uh, Kenny Wallace. I mean, he's sitting there in ninth place. Uh, yeah, he's a lap down, but uh, he's had a great run and runs in the top ten. That's a good effort for he and Philippe. But, but Daryl, they're so equal here. Kurt Busch, Bobby Labonte, Matt Kenseth, Ricky Rudd, Greg Biffle. Last lap, every one of them ran in the 1630s. All five cars. Well, as we said at the top of the day, the practice sheet showed the fastest lap for cars in positions one through 40, only two tenths apart. And despite all the on-track carnage, little has changed. Yeah, and I was worried about Biffle because we saw he was running hot. And I didn't think he got enough water in the thing, but uh, seems like it hadn't hurt his performance. He's right on the back bumper of Ricky Rudd. That'll be for fourth place. Let's go to Biffle's pit. Well, Flash, Biffle came in again, Mike, on that last caution flag, and the crew worked feverishly on the front end of the car. What had happened is the hood and the grill work had closed in. That's why the car was running hot. They pulled it all out and put four fresh tires on it. And Biffle's out there, and he is having the best run of his entire Winston Cup career today. This is the kind of racetrack that you'd expect him to run well on. I mean, he grew up on little tracks like this in California. So, uh, little like this should be right up his alley. But you know what, guys? They missed the show at Las Vegas, and I'm telling you, we got a battle for the lead shaping up with Kurt Busch and Bobby Labonte. They missed the show at Las Vegas, Greg Biffle, and they have been on a tear ever since then. Brought a brand new race car here, and they're having a third good run in a row. Up front, Bobby Labonte goes after Kurt Busch. Labonte's only short track victory. Martinsville, Virginia, last April. He's going to want to run that purple car every week. 
He looks so much better through the center of the corner than Kurt Busch right now. I think it's what do you think old Fatback's doing right now? I don't know. I asked him this morning. I said, how's your race car, Fatback? He said, you just watch old Fatback. There's Michael McSwain. He's watching it right now. Look at that. Calm, cool, and collected. He came by my motorhome last night, Larry. Had two big plates of food. I said, you got company? He said, nope. <laughs> Larry and Darrell have been sitting there watching these leaders get ready to look like they're going to do battle. Well, all along, teammate from Kirk Busch right now, Matt Kenseth, is on his move. I mean, he's been clipping it off about two-tenths a second, gaining on these leaders. If they go to racing one another, he's going to be right there. As we see right now, Greg Biffle has got around the 21 car of Ricky Rudd, and that moves him up to fifth place. Biffle, a little bump and run on Ricky Rudd to take the spot. I wonder, Darrell, if Bobby Labonte's sitting there in second place, right off Kurt Busch's bumper, thinking a little too early to try too hard right now. I think it, uh, you know, we've seen it come down to last two or three laps and who gets, uh, who's in the lead and always who's going to win the race. It's just like Bobby, we talked a second ago, he can just run his car a little bit lower, right there, especially on the exit of the corner, about a half a lane lower than Kurt, but Kurt chops him back off as they hit the straightaway, but tons of lap traffic in front of him, Darrell. Uh, Bobby will be patient here for a little bit. He's a very, very cautious driver. He's very patient. He will not make his move until the time is right. He catches, uh, he catches Kurt up here in traffic now and gets him out of position. He'll probably pounce on him. But this is where you got to be patiently aggressive. And that means sit there, wait, 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 and wait for that guy to open the door so you can go through. Let's have a look at the bump and run between Greg Biffle and Ricky Rudd that caused fourth place to change hands uh, just a couple of laps ago. Biffle had, had been kind of patient, as you described, Daryl, behind Ricky Rudd, but finally, it was time to go. And just remember, Biffle has a little fresher tires than Ricky Rudd in the 21. There you see it, up yeah. on the straightaway. I mean, you get a run on a guy, and, you know, you really don't know if he's going to block you or not, and so uh, sometimes you get into him accidentally. That didn't look accidentally, by the way, but sometimes that happens. Boy, did you hear Ricky's RPMs jump as Biffle got in the back of it? It means rear wheels is off the ground. Just keep on digging. Kurt Busch and Bobby Labonte nose to tail. You know the thing about somebody like Ricky Rudd, though? He knows that Greg's better than he is, and he knows that if, if he, he can pass me and he didn't wreck me, I'm happy. Here come the leaders up on Flash Gordon on the outside of Mark Martin. Whoa! Oh, Mark Martin spins right in Brown. front of the leaders. No caution no yet. No caution yet. He gets going, no caution. But boy, a lot of smoke here on the front stretch. A lot of cars have to back off because they couldn't even see where they were going. Whoa, and Joe Nemechek pile drives Tony Stewart. What in the world? It was all the smoke, Darrell, as they came down the front straightaway. Caution is out, caution is out. Tony lifted and Nemechek came flying right into him. My, my. And that was... I mean, it was 10, 12 seconds behind Mark's spin, but there was such a smoke cloud. The thing that, that you just don't realize is, is when a car spins like Mark did and there's no caution, you, you really don't know. You don't know where everybody is. All you see is the smoke. Now well, they're going to come on pit road. Nemechek is. I can't believe Tony's car is still running as hard as that thing got hit and then hit. Now, pit road's open, Darrell. Six cars on the lead lap. Probably going to be about 20, 22 laps to go. I would have to believe Ricky Rudd, Sterling Marlin being the last cars on the lead lap may come to pit road. Those top three or four, they're going to stay out, I would think. Seems like that'd be a pretty good gamble right now. Come down and get your four tires and see what happens. Now, the first, there's Robbie Gordon outside of Mark Martin. Oh, Mark just come, the car just spun around. Mark, see, he's already been uh, wrecked, and so his car's not driving as good as it should. And, and then everybody's got to come through that days of thunder-like cloud. Spotters don't know if there's going to be a caution or not. They assume there is, because you see all that smoke. What happened oh. to John Andretti in the 43 checked up, Tony Stewart checked up, Joe Nemechek did not check up. Not as much as those guys did anyhow. The accordion compresses again. Well, you just think, you, you just assume there's going to be a caution. See that? Look at that. Now, you're assuming there's going to be a caution. There's Ricky Rudd in the 21, just like we anticipated. Pit road, four tires, full of fuel adjustments. Steve Burns along with Sterling Marlin.
Merrimack, they're going to add some air pressure to that 21. Ricky had gotten very loose on that last set of tires, and he's down the road. And yeah, what these guys will do now, this will be a short run for these guys, so they'll put a little more air pressure in the tires, but they'll come in quicker. Kyle Petty has been, uh, is out of the care center. Here's Jeannie. Well, Kyle Petty, awake and alert. You uh, might have seen him make his way into an ambulance via a stretcher. I, I know it, it looked a lot worse than it was. We're being told that they're just taking him to the Bristol Medical Center for precautionary reasons, and they're going to do a little more in-depth look at him. But again, he is awake and alert. And there was some talk that NASCAR may have had to throw a caution to get him out, but I guess it worked out. Crew Chief Steve Lane, how are you doing? Have you talked to Kyle? Uh, we walked up to the wind and talked to him a little bit, and he just said he heard all over, and that's really all he said. And then uh, they kind of pushed us back to get him out of the car, and I think they're just going to take him to, uh, you know, just for safety precautions, just to make sure it's okay. So I, I, I hope he's just, you know, that's what it is, just just bruised up. So uh, but he took a hard leg. What was the delay getting out of the car? I, I'm sorry. What was the delay getting out of the car? Well, I, I think that, that when when he came to, he told him just 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 the whole tight, you know, from what I could see, just standing back and. Uh, and he kind of caught his breath and stuff, and he, I think he told him that he could get out on his own. And uh, with that uh, seat, they had to take the headrest and stuff off, and they wanted to make sure that they supported his neck. But uh, like I said, I believe, I believe he'll be okay. Could you see this one coming at all? No, and, and it's just one of those racing deals. From what the spotter said, the 22 car was spinning, and he said another inch and hit a miss him. So uh, this was one of those deals that happened. We just, we just hope Kyle's okay. All right, thank you for the time. Thank you. They've opened the crossover gate at turn three. Uh, so that the ambulance can leave as soon as the track, uh, as soon as the field comes by. And we'll take Kyle Petty out via ambulance. And again, this is considered precautionary after a hard hit into the turn one wall as Kyle clipped a spinning ward Burt. a very very heavy gate yeah it's on a cable and as you can see they're trying to push the cable down so the record can go across here's another look at it as Ward Burton comes across after bouncing off the inside wall collecting Kyle That was two hard licks. Yeah, when he got hit by the 22 car, then uh, that that was a wake-up call, and then he got hit up against that wall. After he knew that was going to hurt. Now the two cars involved in this caution, Joan Emacek and Tony Stewart, continue to make their way around the track and around pit road, making multiple stops. Stewart couldn't hardly see past that hood, so get it out of there. Now that car must have a pretty good crash bar in the front of it, Larry, the 20 car, because uh, I don't see any steam coming out of it. Yeah, I mean, he's showing right now on our score in an 11th position, with 12th position, just one lap down. So they're going to do everything they can here. It's going to be about maybe 18 laps to go when we get this race restarted. We need to document the type of restart we'll have is what we call the 25 lap rule, where those six lead lap cars only will be in the outside line, but that's a bunch of lap cars on the inside. As bad as this damage, though, you know, it may not have any water in it. It may have already lost all of it, but I don't see any steam. I don't see any smoke. Uh, I think he lucked out in that area. And he's able to stay out there just one lap down. Here's Dick Bergman. Do you guys realize how good this is for Kurt Busch to have these laps going under caution? No chance for Bobby Labonte to do anything to him right now. Labonte had been on his back bumper, threatening to pass at any moment. Now he just gets to ride around for a bunch of laps. Bobby's going to have fewer laps to try to get by him now. I tell you, Dick, Kurt Busch has done everything but been to victory lane this year. Five races, three second-place finishes, including that great finish at Darlington last week. The 18 car is better than this 97. The question is, how hard is Bobby going to try? I don't mean that he will back off and run second, but he knows he doesn't want to wreck both of them. And that's the chance you take here, especially late in runs on these older tires. Well, next weekend, Darrell, the scene shifts to Texas. Bush Series practice on speed, Winston Cup qualifying Saturday. Final practice on FX in the O'Reilly 300 Bush race presented by Old Spice here on Fox. Next Sunday, NASCAR this morning on Fox Sports Net and the Samsung Radio Shack 500 right here on Fox. NASCAR rolls on across the Fox Networks next weekend. Two to go and we'll get a restart. 
down to the confines of the Hollywood Hotel. Thanks, Mike. 17 cautions. And uh, Kurt Busch, you spoke with Jimmy Fennick. Even though he won last year, this is an entirely, and looks like he could do it again, an yeah. entirely different setup. Yeah, these guys here, they haven't been afraid to change the setup. Even though they won the race here a year ago, they started looking for better ways to make this car faster and be able to make him get back to victory lane. And right now, it looks like it's working pretty good. He was off a little bit early on. They kept working on it. They got better and better. So far, it's looking pretty good right now. And you think that Matt Kenseth, the currently running third, has a pretty good chance here of making a move? He's in the catbird seat, in my, my opinion, right now. If Bobby Labonte goes up there, and you know how Kurt Busch is, he's not going to relate with this, this lead very easily. He may be in the best position to take advantage of what these two guys dish out to each other. So we've got 479 laps, uh, 500 makes this complete, Jeff. But what kind of restart? How, how do you think that will affect things? <laughs> the restart's going to be the key to this whole deal. These inside cars on the inside could affect things. Kevin Harvick's trying to get a lap back along with Jimmy Johnson. They very easily could, you know, get in there. Rusty Wallace is trying to make his way back up there. He's only a lap down. All these guys know that it's a long way from being over with 20 laps to go, you know, so they're going to be fighting their way up there. Don't forget Jimmy Spencer. He's trying to improve his position, got a fast race car. It's going to be settled right here probably with this restart. Rusty Wallace, uh, who has won here nine times the most of any active driver, two laps down. Let's go back upstairs, rejoin Mike Joy, Darrell Waltrip, and Larry McReynolds. He just squeezed up in line in front of his younger brother, Kenny, who is but one lap down. And, and so is and Jeff Gordon, too. Sorry, Mike. That's all right. <laughs> Everybody's shoving to get in. <laughs> I'm, I'm just nervous on this restart. Here we go. Green flag, green, green, green. Like Kurt Busch got a nice smooth start, Darrell. He's going to clear Kevin Harvick as they go through turn two, but Harvick's not going to give up. Woo. He wants that lap back. He knows there's only six cars on the lead lap. Kenza slices to the bottom on Bobby Labonte for second. Boy, and now, and now the 18 car. No, he's going to get in that hole right there. Good, good move. Good and you move. heard Jeff Hammond say he'd been watching the score monitor. Matt Kenseth may have had the quickest car before that caution came out a while ago. Sometimes you think you're holding a little something and you're not. In this case, I think he was holding a little something and we're going to see it. And the best friend Kurt Busch has right now is not his teammate, Matt Kenseth. It's Kevin Harvick, but that's not going to last for long as Harvick slides up yeah. and Kenseth goes past him. Yeah. We'll have 16 to go next time. I tell you, that's the mature Kevin Harvick right there. Moves up out of the way, lets those guys go for the lead. Harvick is one lap down. Again, a consequence of making his pit stop in the middle of a green flag sequence and the caution coming out shortly thereafter. But with the year those guys have had, I'm sure they'll take this top 10 finish if they can come out of here with one. Isn't this the best a Richard Childress racing car has been this year? Oh, by far, other than maybe Daytona. By far. I really think the crew chief change this time will help Kevin. Bobby Labonte don't have near the race car right now he had a while ago, Darrell. He can't keep it down in the middle of the corner. Well, I think it takes a few laps for it to come in. Uh, I think that's the difference of he and Kurt's car, possibly, is it takes Bobby's a few laps to get the tires heated up. Fourth place fight once again. Can Ricky Rudd take it to Greg Biffle? Well, Ricky's got tires, you know. Ricky came down pit road and got him some tires. He ought to be able to get right by. Greg Biffle's not going to make it easy for him. We have 13 laps to go. Whoa, easy, buddy, easy. Man, when that's that's where you just wish that guy would give you a little bit more room and you can slice right in there. Sterling Marlin's not too far behind these guys, but he's having a heck of a time with Jimmy Spencer in that seven car. Sterling's got tires, too, 21 and 40. Both got tires, but they're not doing them any good. How many times have we seen that? I don't know. Rudd's underneath him down there. He there he goes. There he goes. He's going to clear him. That was the battle for four. Tony Stewart, black flagged, not up to minimum speed. We'll try to crawl around here another lap or two. Now, I think that the Rudd's car will continue to improve, Larry, and he's going to get up there and get after the 18 car in pretty, pretty short order. He's still got Jimmy Johnson in that 48 to contend with. Remember, he's a lap car. Yeah, I think Jimmy will, yeah, I think Jimmy will give him some room let him go. There's room to let him go by and not lose anything. Ten to go this time. Ten to go. Rusty just got up behind Jeff Gordon, or just let Jeff Gordon go by. Darrell can't ignore that four Jack Roush-powered cars are in the front five. What a change from the past few weeks. Boy, it is. That's amazing. This, this Ford will do that to you, though. It'll humiliate you. It'll humble you. Rudd gets by the 48 car, Jimmy Johnson, so that puts him up there where the next car in line in front of him is Bobby Labonte in that 18 car who's running in third. And Jimmy Spencer on Ricky Craven. That's for position. That's back for 12th place, two laps down. I, think it, uh, I thought Rudd might be able to catch Labonte, but his car has really improved. Uh, the longer that they run, the better it gets. 
And, Darrell, I've been trying to look at this lap cars. There's a lot of wounded cars in front of Kurt Busch, but for the most part, he has a clear racetrack with seven laps to go. Yeah, he's, he's got pretty smooth sailing. Michael's up there, the 43, but those guys, are they're well aware of the leader coming. And he's about a tenth of a lap quicker than his teammate Matt Kenseth right now. Six laps to go, and the other pre-race favorites, Jeff Gordon one lap down, Rusty Wallace two laps down, all a result of what happened during that long green flag run and the caution coming out in the middle of pit stops. But I'm going to tell you, I look at Matt Kenseth, the 17 car started this race, 37th, big picture racing. Second place looks pretty good right now as the Winston Cup points leader. Yeah, plus your teammates up there leading. Uh, you know, let's just take this thing to the house, boys. Five to go, looks good. Hey, got there. I love it. Oh, I love that. Looking good. Five to go. In the last eight Winston Cup races, Kurt Busch has been running at the finish at six of them. Three wins, three seconds are those six finishes. Boy, Rudd is, he's catching the 18 car, but I just don't believe he's going to have time, Larry. Three to go, three laps to go. Car owner Jack Roush looking for his fourth win at Bristol. Two for Mark Martin, one for Kurt Busch. Last year's here. Plus, you got to think Elliot Sadler was in it, you know, in a pretty much a Roush car when he won here, too. Roush powered car, the Wood Brothers. That's right. right. Kurt Busch has almost a second lead on leader Matt Kenseth. Be white flag next time by. Clear, clear. White flag right here. White flag. Man. Half a lap to go for Kurt Busch. Yeah, he's uh, got her own cruise control. One lap car won't be a factor. Second straight Food City 500 win for Kurt Busch. Matt Kinson finished second, Bobby Labonte third, Ricky Rudd fourth, Greg Bimple fifth, Sterling Marlin sixth, all lead lap cars. And Kurt Busch becomes the sixth different winner of 2003. Here are the two flags the race driver most wants to see, the checkered flag and the stars and stripes. Today. We talked about Kevin Harvick in seventh, and Kenny Wallace comes home in ten. And I think that the, if it's not the best Bill Davis racing finish of the year, it's right up there. By a long way. By a long way. Jamie McMurray. I mean, that wreck and everything else comes in uh, 11th. Spencer there. Yeah, Jamie McMurray in a backup car, and then had to start at the rear of the field. And Robbie Gordon, as much as much trouble as he found himself in all day, he finished his 17th. Bill Elliott fell back a little there at the end at 18. Big hit for Tony Stewart, though. Fell out of the race, comes in here second point, so he's going to take the hit in those points. 26. Matt Yoakum. 
Well, Mike, what a great recovery by Bobby Labonte. All the way back in 26 at one point, Bob, to come home third. A great day. Yeah, you know, the guys in this uh, Adver Chevrolet did a great job today. They uh, worked real hard. Um, you know, we had a, had a couple mishaps there, got behind, and uh, everything worked pretty good where we got back uh, back up there. But, uh, you know, just right there at the end, uh, the car wouldn't go as good, and I think somebody was dropping some fluid down and got real slippery for a while. And, and uh, then it got better after that, but, uh, you know, still to come home third today is pretty good. Um, you know, wish we could have run that uh, probably a green flag run there at the end instead of have a couple cautions. But that's way it goes. Bobby Labonte third, third top five this season, Mike. Kurt Busch has finally found his way to victory lane where there's a host of well-wishers and somewhere amongst them, Steve Burns. Yeah, thanks, Mike. Kurt Busch, victorious here at Bristol for the second year in a row. Climbs out to celebrate. back-to-back -back races here at Bristol. Uh, it's unbelievable. I mean, this is the greatest country in the world, and I have to thank all the vets and everybody that's overseas fighting for us that we're able to come out here and compete and produce a race like this. I mean, it's it's just a total team effort. It's it's wonderful, and I just got to thank the good Lord for giving us a great car. I mean, it's the silver metallic Sharpie, and we got it to Victory Lane. I'm just blessed. I've been having great luck with special paint scheme cars, and here we are in Victory Lane again. What was the key to victory, Kurt? We, we were the fastest in happy hour yesterday, and I wasn't quite sure that was good. <laughs> and that usually ends means you're going to be bad on long runs. So we changed the car around. We needed to be good on long runs, and we finally got one. We went from 18th to the lead during that long run. I think that was the key to the race. So just being consistent and having Jimmy Fenning's experience with me, and along with this great group of guys, I mean, I just got to congratulate everybody at Roush for the way that things can go when we get it right. I mean, it's, wonder it's wonderful. Congratulations. Kurt, let's go to Dick Berger with his teammate. Matt Kessins for the second today, and you did it the hard way. First at the green flag from a start deep in the field and then a bad pit stop again deep in the field. How did you do it? We just had a great handling car, you know. Um, I, I don't know what happened qualifying. I just messed the deal up there. And uh, we had a great car all day yesterday. And had a great car all day today. So I'm really, really happy finishing second, but I really thought we had the car to beat uh, at the end of the race. And, um, you know, I got a run on Bobby, which I was real lucky. I kind of got him with a lap car. And uh, we made contact on the back stretch and it tore the fender off. And it actually bent in the tire where I couldn't turn the car. And it kind of, uh, you know, killed our chances there then. So I was a little disappointed that happened, but, but yet real happy. Uh, you know, whenever you can come out of Bristol and only have one fender dented in and run second, that's a great day. Nice job. Mike Joy, pick three things you can count on happening here at Bristol. First, expect a lot of contact. Second, expect the unexpected. And third, somebody's going to hit the right setup. And Kurt Busch did at just the right time. Hundred sixty thousand fans file out. They all got their money's worth today. Next weekend, NASCAR on Fox rolls into Texas with Bush Series practice on speed, followed by Winston Cup qualifying on Fox Sports Net. That's Friday. Saturday, you'll see Winston Cup practice 1 p.m. Eastern on FX and the O'Reilly 300 presented by Old Spice on Fox. Sunday, of course, NASCAR this morning, 10:30 a.m. Eastern time, and the Samsung Radio Shack 500 right here on Fox. Here's Matt. Well, Mike, Ricky Rudd scores the Wood Brothers' first top 10 finish this season. This is big for you and this team to get this momentum rolling. We'll get back to Matt in a moment. Technical difficulties down there with Ricky Rudd. Here's Jeannie. Well, Greg Biffle, let's see. The nose was punched in. You were overheating. You became a regular on pit road. How are you even standing here, top five? Well, I tell you, I drove my uh, butt off today. It was a, it was a long day for us, but uh, I'm surprised I'm not tired at all after 500 laps at Bristol. But the guys just kept working on the car. You know, we didn't really have our stuff all together in the pits, a little miscommunication, and but we got water in it finally and uh, got all the tape off it, you know, instead of just a piece. Finally took all the tape off and got the overheating problem fixed. But there at the end, I didn't want to see that caution. We were the fastest car in the racetrack and, you know, I was closing on the 17 a little bit. I think I'd have been third or fourth, uh, at least fourth, at, uh, maybe third. But um, that's what happened happens and uh, you know I'm excited and just uh, like to say hey to all the troops uh, you know overseas doing what they're doing and we're here have, being able to do what we do and uh, family back home and everybody and uh, all the Granger folks and uh, like to say hi to Lisa Pilati it's uh, 
Pitt, we miss you here. Well, congratulations on your first top five. Mike? Thank, thanks, Jeannie, and our apologies to Ricky Rudd for uh, that microphone taking a hit as we went to that interview. But, Daryl, you can see why everybody renews their tickets at Bristol, and there are never any available for this or the night race. No, the thing that surprised me today was all that green flag racing and those green flag stops and those veterans, Larry, making that mistake of coming in on pit road wrong, using the whole pit lane instead of coming in off the corner they were on. Well, you've taught me in the last two years, never say never. You don't come to Bristol figuring that strategy of having to make green flag stops would be the difference in the outcome of this race. But I think especially in the case of Jimmy Spencer and Kevin Harvick, it was definitely one of the difference. But add a boy to Roush Engines. Four of the top five finishers after all the problems the last two weeks. And here's the thing I see. Kurt Busch and Jimmy Finney. You know who they remind me of? Who's that? Jeff Gordon and Ray, Ray Everham. Oh, of course. They've got that combination. They've got that. They're clicking, baby. And they, they, I, 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 I'm so impressed with how that car runs week in and week out. Well, nothing left to say, but see you in Texas. Let's go back to Chris Myers to close us out. All right, thanks, guys. And let's take a look at the uh, points. And Matt Kenseth, it's uh, Roush Racing up at the top, third straight week, and uh, biggest lead of the season right there behind him, though, Jeff Hammond, is Kurt Busch. Kurt Busch right now, we've talked about his passion as far as driving a race car is concerned. And the one thing right now I think makes him more of a danger than anybody else out there is I know how he goes about setting his race cars up. He has a different approach than any other driver I've ever worked with. And when you combine him with Jimmy Fennick, I mean, he's got the savvy as far as being a veteran crew chief is concerned, they are making a very great, I mean, unique combination that's very successful right now. And when it comes to trying to make his championship battle, it's going to be real interesting to see how Robbie Riser and teammate Matt Kins have worked, you know, as far as uh, who's going to settle this thing before the end of the year. They're going to be in great position to uh, b basically battle all year long, I think. You have Fennec more than twice uh, his age. Uh, Kurt Busch, of course, 24 years old. And after losing by a nose last week, wins by 10. Carl Ains, again, a repeat winner here at Bristol. And uh, as his crew, which has been supportive, uh, he wins uh, for his uh, second time here in Bristol. And I want to remind you real quick, if you want to be a Grand Marshal for a day, don't forget to tune in during the first hour of our racing and look for the uh, secret number on the animated logo and log on to NASCAR.com or FoxSports.com as well. And the uh, Winston Cup McDonald's uh, drive through challenge powered by Powerade. All pit stops timed in the eligible crews to have a chance to win 20000 And then the season-long winner, two. 200,000. Jeff Hammond, real quick, uh, the uh, advancement of uh, Roush Racing coming back after after the engine problems uh, dominating in the points lead and looking like uh, clear sailing from here on out. Well, I wouldn't call it clear sailing yet, but I do know Jack Roush and that whole group right there, and they're dedicated to making more power and getting these guys where they can go as hard as they want to the rest of this year and run for this championship, because Jack Roush has never won a Winston Cup championship, and right now he's in the best position.